Hey there, lovely soul. Infinity here. And here are your options for your geometric shapes to get started with your readings. Here we have the Dr. Hedron. It is a 12 face geometric shape. So take a look at that see how it resonates for you. Then we have the octahedron, eight sides, so it's like two pyramids, top and bottom connected. Then we have the icosahedron. This one has 20 faces, as you see that 20 there. So take a look at that and see how that resonates with you. And lastly, the trap, trapezohedron. Uh, this is 10 faces, five on top and five on bottom. And I can show you how they spin when we toss them. So there's the doctorhedron. There is the icos, oh sorry, the octahedron. Here's the icosahedron and the trapezohedron. So they, there they are again. Your choice is number one, number two, number three, and number four. And if you're guided to more than just one, if you can't decide between this one and this one, let's say, then watch both readings, okay? That means that your guides are telling you, you have really strong messages coming through in more than one reading and that's perfectly fine. It, these are kind of longer readings, so, you know, stop them, come back to them as needed, but pick your reading and I will see you there. Love you. Hey there, lovely soul, Infinity here. And thank you so much for joining me for this very special set of readings. We have a pick a card or pick a uh, geometric shape readings coming up for you, four different ones. And uh, the first one is, is a doctahedron. So take a look at that. Let me turn on the light here take a look at that and they do have numbers on them so we will get into the numbers as well um but this is your first choice it's a doctahedron doctahedrons are 12 sides next so 12 sides for the doctahedron next is a um, octahedron so eight there's eight sides to the doctahedron so there's that. And then next we have the icosahedron. And there's that one. And then the last one is a trapezohedron. Really cool dice here. So I was guided to get these dice uh, a few weeks ago, it was just all of a sudden it popped in. I didn't see it anywhere. It just popped into my, to my head as guidance often does. And it was, you're going to start doing divination with dice. And I was like, oh, cool. So I was thinking of regular dice. And then I started looking into dice and I found these really cool dice. They are, um, actually dungeon and dungeon, dry dungeons and dragons dice. Yeah. And they come in this really cute. Uh, and no, I've never played Dungeons or Dragons. And there's actually, what am I doing? There we go. And there's actually uh, a couple more. Um, there's actually two trapezohedrons. Uh, and then we have a cube. that one and then the pyramid but for these readings um i was guided to use these four and i'll i'll use the other ones at some point i'm going to be working with these in the, more in the future so it's not just for this 
this these readings and it was just to be four and so what we're doing today is we're tapping in we're tapping in with the divine feminine specifically Gaia and we are going to be getting messages from her off. Oh, yeah, it's just way too bright. Um, we're going to be getting messages from her for specifically for Mother's Day, Mother's Day energies, um, just messages from <clears throat> the divine feminine and Gaia and any divine, any um, goddess, deity, uh, Ascended Master, Archangel, uh, Spirit Guide, Ancestor that you relate to as a Divine Feminine aspect or um, guide for you. Those are the energies coming in. But first and foremost, uh, it would be Gaia's. Gaia's impression is probably going to come in like hardest, I feel. I do work with her very very closely in everything that I do um, all of my healings she's a big push she's a huge part of my healings <coughs> excuse me now oh, this is already starting up with my third eye excuse me so she's her energy came through really really strong strongly uh, to have me do these readings and that they were going to incorporate the dice because I've done a bunch of readings since I've gotten these dice a couple weeks ago and it just hasn't come through for me to work with them until today for these readings for the divine feminine mother's day energies so energies um for the divine feminine so of course this is for any at all sexes you don't have or however you identify as feminine or masculine male, female, or anything else. Uh, these are just energies that are coming in with this portal of Mother's Day. And Mother's Day is its own portal. What I was hear hearing earlier was that the veil is really, really thin for Mother's Day. So the fairy realm most closely uh, or most potently, I guess you could say, uh, is going to be coming in and... Um, we're in like just reaching through uh because the veil is thinner for this mother's day portal like i don't know how else to put that she just told me like she just said not too long ago she popped in and she goes uh she's like just let everybody know that the veil is very thin for connecting with the fairy realm and the fairy realm and the fairies have been coming through very strongly uh these last few weeks and it's just kind of ramping up with their energy it's been really really cool if you still haven't done my full moon meditation it's i channel my meditations i very specifically work with gaia and all of my meditations but in that uh in that channeled guided astral meditation we were really working strongly with the fairies and that was just really awesome so it might not be a, a surprise to hear that we're gonna work with the fairies with our cards today uh we have the heart of fairy oracle from brian froud and the fairy oracle by brian froud and the heart of fairy is has more of a uh relationship theme or romantic theme to it then and the and the fairy oracle is all like the what you would call the main fairies that when they created this deck uh came th were just like the main ones that came through to be to for us to know and to t for them to for us to tap in with their energy i'm sorry i'm so tongue-tied about this um and 
So those decks are very, very potent in energy. Uh, and it's not often I'm guided to go to them. If you watch my channel and watch my, my readings, uh, yeah, it's not very often. It's not very often. Even in private, with private reads, it's not often that I'm guided to go there. They're very, very picky about when they come out to play and to give us messages. I do work um, more frequently with the Dragon Fate Oracle by uh, Lucy Cavendish. And the other one that, the other Oracle deck uh, by Lucy that I have, she has a lot of them. I have three of her decks. I'm sure I'll be getting, be, I'll be guided to get more in the future. But this is the Wild Wisdom of the Fairy Oracle. So we'll be tapping into uh, probably not both of those for each read, but one of those for each read, as well as the crystal oracle so i was guided to to pull these out as well and oh yeah i was just reminded that um right before i came on and started this video uh i went through all of these decks um also the shadowscapes tarot is going to be our clarifier if we need it our main uh tarot we're going to be working with is the dreams of gaia tarot um <laughs> I was just going to use the shadowscapes and I kept thinking about the dreams of Gaia tarot and I was like, am I supposed to use that, that, that tarot? And I'm, it's still pretty new to me and I'm getting used to it. It's very, very different. I say that every time I work with it because it is, I, I really feel it's kind of more, or it has way more of an Oracle feel to, to, for me than, than tarot, but you'll see what I mean. It's really cool. Um, if you have not seen, what is going on here with these cards? Oh, okay. Uh, if you've not seen or experienced this deck, you will see. Uh, and the, the <laughs> it was like, guy is coming in really strong for this reading. Of course, you're going to work with this with this deck. I was like, oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, I used my pendulum to to suss that out, along with finding out that yes, we are to use the scout the shadowscapes tarot as a clarifier if needed. But anyway. Oh, and then the last one, let me just get through this. The last deck we'll use uh, is the uh, angel, the Angels of Abundance. Um, so I was guided to pull that out. So anyway, uh, before we came on here, I go through every single deck. I light up my sage and palo santo and whatever dried flowers I have going on in my little bowl right here. Create a nice smoke and I uh, go through for three to five cards at a time through the smoke so i was doing that and i was doing that with with the uh crystal medicine oracle and out flung a card and as you can see they're round so out flung a card on top of the other cards and spun around and then landed face down and i was like what in the heck card is that i've never seen that happen before <laughs> with these cards and it was the divine feminine card. <laughs> and i was like i'm not recording that i wish i was recording that just to be like <laughs> it's like wild stuff that happens with the cards and then when i was doing it with the uh with the dreams of gaia tarot which we're gonna get into in a moment when we start the reads uh the this chunk of cards came out it was like five cards and it was the six of earth uh divine feminine and masculine card there's a divine feminine masculine card and then the queen of water and journey uh oh and the yeah uh yeah those are the ones and then journey and then i sh i made note of that i put him back in shuffled shuffled and then out dumped another chunk of cards and it was literally uh, the same cards like those didn't even through more and more and more shuffling they all popped out again they, they were, I think there was maybe one extra card oh yeah thought was in the second pile but it was just an added to that first chunk and I had really shuffled so I wouldn't be surprised if we see any or all those cards come through at some point with these reads i just have to put that out there those things i was just guided to share because it was pretty interesting the cards that came through there 
And so, um, I think that's it for the intro. I'm super excited to do these readings for you, dear lovely soul. And oh yeah, if you don't know who I am, I'm Infinity, shaman, mystic, medical medium, psychic, physical empath, ascension guide, channeled astral meditation guide, and soul guide, and um, distance energy healer, channeler, and uh, divinely guided artist as well. And and uh, that is definitely my passion, as is all of the other things I, I mentioned there. You can check me out on my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. And for another week, I'm offering a really special special on mediumship um, in celebration for Mother's Day. And so you can check it out and see if there's still space available. Um, I know it's like people are starting to, to book more now. So um, see if you're interested in that or any of the other services that I offer along with my eBooks on energy, um, psychic attack empaths, the spiritual war. Uh, I have a podcast that is, uh, or that can, that's on my, you can get to it from my website consists of a lot of information and uh, a lot of guided astral meditations on there way more than than I have on my YouTube channel just FYI okay so I think that's it again I would just want to thank you for being here and wish you a happy Mother's Day so take your time here and pick out which uh, which one of the geometric shapes really um, you're really feeling, whether it's the doctahedron, uh, that which is um, 12 sides, the octahedron, eight sides, the um, uh, icosahedron, which is 20 sides, and then the trapezohedron is eight sides. So, you know, so we have a couple of eights here and um, the 20 and the 12 is that right yeah <laughs> um oh no 10 sorry 10 i was like that doesn't sound right they're like no that's not right so we have 12 8 20 and 10 the trapezohedron is that's this guy that is a that's the 10 faced uh, geometric shape. So tap it with whichever one is speaking to you and uh, go ahead, follow the timestamps and I will see you in your reading. Bye for now. Hey there, lovely soul. So you picked the doctahedron. And so we're going to get into, oh, that one wants to come out. What is this? This is the Nine of Fire. Lovely. I'll show you the cards after I pull them all. Nine of Fire is out first for you. And again, uh, just to reiterate, this is just tap in with the Divine Feminine, with Mother Gaia, Mother Nature. She is your, your great mother. She's known you through every lifetime you've ever, you've ever lived. And uh, she has messages for you today to, to inspire you, to give you guidance and motivation for this time of the year. So, all right, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay. Foul. That was a party foul. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, we have the Nine of Fire, the Father card. So that would be like the emperor card, kind of similar, pr pretty similar in this, in this deck. It's like I said in the intro, it's a bit different. The ace of, uh, water. Yes. Yes. Water, ace of water. And the six of cups. The five of fire, 
and the nine of water. So very interesting here with this nine of fire and nine of water coming in um, on either side. Oh, that glare is really annoying. Let's see. Turn that down. Better. It's the only thing about the, these cards that I am not too hip on is that they they pick up a lot of light and they they get a lot of glare. So I will do my best to share these with you without too much glare. So anyway, uh, we have this coupling here uh, that I'm being pointed at. So that is really interesting with the father card. The Ace of Water, the Five of Fire, and, or sorry, the Six. Oh no, sorry, did I say Fire? That's the, that's the Six of Swords. Sorry, Six of Swords. Just interesting the way that they, that she does these. And the Five of Fire. Okay, and then the Nine of Water. Okay, so... <laughs> We're really working on in this time period here to balance out this, uh, I feel I'm hearing inner struggle with the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Um, I may be speaking to somebody who is a gay or lesbian or, you know, from the, that, that community, um, like there's, there's feels like there's possibly been influence here, uh, dominant father, dominant, like male, male energy conflict, um, like inner conflict. Look at how similar these cards are like the, and it's interesting that the six of swords is came in before the five of fire and oh my goodness with the glare but if you see but it's like the the six the six of swords is is a tr is like a, a truce like calm down energies that kind of thing but the five of fire is the exact opposite it's conflict um and usually this is conflict with others but it feels more inner but because it's been on the inside i'm hearing it's also been on the outside like whatever's on the inside manifests on the outside so uh and then this ace feels like this is just what I'm getting here is very much a guided protective type energies like your guides have been there helping you heal helping you see yourself fully and clearly um or I'm hearing this could be for people who are bi as well, not just gay or lesbian. So that kind of came through strong at first, but I'm hearing now like this could definitely be for people who identify more like bi or sexually fluid. Maybe now um, that maybe now you're kind of like, yeah, you know what? I love people and I love I can fall in love with with a soul and, you know, that kind of thing more than a gender um, so it could be that you're that, that you, you feel that way about it, or maybe even that you're like going to start feeling more this way about it. Really interesting here. Um, feels though like with this five of fire that there's still 
unfinished business I'm hearing <laughs> unfinished business with at least a somebody if not maybe a couple somebodies in the in the realm of relationships and um love type relationships or you know that sort of intimate relationship or yeah definitely definitely the of the intimate variety so that there's things that are left unresolved or there's still maybe it's resolved but it's not healed so it could be that too or there still could be loose ends there and still very much connected so i would definitely consider um cord cutting and if you're unfamiliar check out my ebook and um do your inventory and the uh companion guided astral meditation that channeled guided astral meditation all my meditations are channeled um that is a my mo i think my most popular meditation and it is truly transformative so you're very much being guided to that and of course it's all free the ebook's free the meditation's free just going to take your time energy and effort to take care of yourself but that is definitely in order okay um I'm being guided to kind of move on from here. We're going to get back to these cards. I know we are, but I'm not going to stop with that right now. Um, my hand went directly to the Heart of Fairy Oracle. If I could get them all up. Holy moly. Uh, so let's go there and see what we get next. And the way these readings are just are just going to go, like how I'm guided through it, um, as far as number of cards and that whole thing. So let's continue on here. And I'm hearing this is coming through. And remember, there's our first two cards at least. And remember, I'm hearing don't don't get defensive don't feel outed or anything like that or you know it's interesting this energy it's like this is energies and messages coming through from our great mother and she is so close to, to us and she knows us very very intimately so she says you know these are going to be deeper readings so just so you know there okay so we have the returning interesting the returning and let me try and i will be oh that was, okay there we go i'm like now the light's not working that is the returning and the star fairy so 65 and 36 Hmm. So 11 and 9. The Star Fairy. Mama, she's so pretty. And back, I'm going to show you again. The Returning. Interesting. The Returning. Hmm. Okay, and I'm hearing one more, but one more from the Fairy Oracle. Not the Heart of Fairy. So two from the Heart of Fairy. And we're going to get one from the Fairy fairy oracle in this card okay two cards <laughs> thought it was one guess it's two and we have the fairy godmother and the singer of healing oh my goodness i love it the fairy godmother coming through on mother's day for us oh, i love it and the singer of healing oh my gosh wow deep 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 okay so whew. now because i don't usually get a whole lot of cards with the fairy because i like to refer to the books and they tend to be longer in description especially the fairy oracle the the heart of fairy oracle these descriptions are much shorter so i can rip through this pretty quickly but the ones in the in the fairy oracle are definitely longer 
Um, so we'll see what I'm guided to get into there. What am I looking for? 65. There we go. The returning. Oh, this is actually pretty long though. Okay. The returning profound change, new perspective and understanding. What is the returning? Is it the end? Hardly. There is no end in fairy. Where, where has this fairy been? What has she seen and what has she thought? back sorry brought back with her i'm not sure i'm going to be able to do this with this light i may need help here we'll see here <laughs> um and what has she brought back with her a pearl of wisdom a unicorn horn what tales will she tell you the paths you follow flow into each other and an end of one path is the beginning of another as you journey deeper into the heart of fairy. The returning is coming home, coming back to a place that is no longer only where you started from, but somewhere much more profound. You can't return and expect things to have remained the same while you were away. Everything shifts and changes, moving on a metamorphosing moving on and metamorphosing into something new if you draw the returning think about what it is that you really wish to change in your life as you sit with the returning before you visualize what would happen if you just walked out of the room for a moment and upon returning found that your understanding of the present situation had changed in a profound way what would it take to make that change happen? What could you do? How would you need to feel to shift your perspective? Sometimes by taking a moment to return to where you are now, you will be able to see the moment with greater clarity and insight. And the next step on your ongoing journey will become clear as well. Sorry, I was kind of struggling through there. It's just I'm having a hard time with the rhythm of the way that that's written. But I'm also feeling the energy at the same time. So I'm like glitching out. Uh, so really what I was feeling here with the returning as I read that was kind of a full circle moment in which it's like, understanding deeply like where did all of this where did all of these feelings about yourself yourself your sexuality um the divine masculine and your like that inner conflict like where is that at and where did it begin and how is is it changing now and it feels to me like you're gonna be like wow um it has changed like if you if yeah it's like your understanding of what it is to be a human a soul incarnate what what love and sexual energy is and attraction to, on an energetic level not only just physically being attracted to certain types or looks or genders or whatever but it's also about energy and it's like there it says she she's saying think about a time where you realize that it wasn't this or that for you or or it wasn't the normal thing for you that there was some type of indication that my oh did i totally move the camera just realizing that i don't want i don't look at myself so i'm like the camera totally moved um th there i am realizing a different look <laughs> interesting but there's some kind of like time for you some type of event that caused you to see yourself in a certain way that was like different or separate from like most people and that that caused you to kind of sh like stuff that down and, and not want that to be a, an issue um for you like you you'd rather it just not be a factor like a lot of like i think that's really shifting because there is so much more understanding and um awareness about sexuality and sexual orientation but you know if you were if you're anywhere above like 
30 or 40 and above it wasn't so necessarily clear cut and and an easy path for everybody so that's just that's what that returning is about um this could also be you now the other thing that came up that it was flying through my brain as i was trying to read very light letters on a very dark page um is that this could very well be about a returning of a a person an energy uh an experience a relationship that like i said in the beginning is like that there isn't resolution that there's something there's strings that are still connected there's still that cord that's connected and that is the returning and this could be either a positive or a negative thing and either way you're being guided to reset or or cut cords and reset that energy to really help with and we got the singer of healing so really coming through with the singer of healing to, um and that is strictly about you needing to heal on multiple levels physically energetically emotionally uh spiritually when it comes to this situation here let's go to the star fairy i'm hearing oh oh wait Oh, that's 36. Oh, I, I'm like, what? I opened a 30 and because I am not wearing my glasses, uh, I thought it, I thought it was 30, 30. Anyway, I was like, why isn't that the right, right card? Uh, don't mind me. I'm such a dork. Okay. The star fairy, universal connections, cosmic collaboration and unity it's easy to go through life not feeling connected to anyone or anything we insulate ourselves from that which surrounds us it can be overwhelming to think about the vastness above us and we may feel the need to protect ourselves oh well i start yawning when i start picking up information so it's not that i'm tired uh so sorry about that. Okay. We insulate ourselves from that which surrounds us. It can be overwhelming to think about the vastness above us. And we may feel the need to protect ourselves from, the, from that vastness. The Star Fairy invites connection to the universe. When you find this being in a reading, it is important to think about how we are connected. Not only to everything on earth but to the stars and the whole universe multiverse actually as well look up it may be the middle of the day or you may be in a place that has such a illumination at night that you never see the stars but remember that they are there the energy of the stars is in all of us literally we are made up of tiny bits of star energy and that is what fairy dust is the star fairy embodies that energy with us always whether we can see it or not reminding us of our universal connections oh i love this so much that got me kind of emotional because it's like don't get caught up in the the human fears and personality and stories of what is right or wrong or what you are or who you are you know oh, come on huh. <laughs> that's a little fast please cooperate <laughs> freaking thing um okay it's it's having a heart it's like it's really okay there we go holy goodness gracious all right i give up sorry <laughs> I can't. Um, anyway, so the star fairy is reminding us to not get up and get caught up 
in like the human fears and the human stories and the human rights and wrongs and that kind of, you know, what you should be and remember your, your soul, uh, your infinite soul and how it's connected to the universe, the multiverse and how Gaia is connected to your soul. It's interesting. You know, when I get into healings with people and her, she always reminds everybody like, you're not new to me. Like everybody comes in like, Oh, does she know me? Like, is there what the connection is going to be like? Like how personal is this going to be? It's very personal. And it's not just personal on for this lifetime. It's personal for all your lifetimes. And, um, because any, any, your all your lifetimes, at least upon her body being her, being your mother, um, here when you've incarnated on, on planet earth, mother Gaia, and, um, you know, she births all of everything upon her body, the, the elements, the animals, the, the plant kingdom, the insect kingdom, and of course us humans and everything we birth is an extension of her as, as our great mother in which we all came from because she's our mother's 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 we could just sit here forever and so that connectedness is being like i'm seeing this like please connect to this infinite uh and ding ding um to the infinite nature of your soul the infinite nature of your story in your different incarnations and the in the infinite nature of your relationship with gaia and everything upon gaia and then <laughs> next we have the fairy uh godmother just wow <laughs> it's just wow <laughs> i don't even know what to say um with this with this reading let me get into it with the fairy godmother Gifts, talents, grace, helpful lessons. Uh, okay, so just to give you a little perspective here, this is a deck by Brian Froud. He's the one who paints all of these paintings. They're actually paintings. Um, and uh jessica Macbeth is the person who he got to connect with the paintings and actually write the book that that went with the with the deck which is a really interesting collaboration um and it, it that's for the fairy oracle for the heart of fairy oracle it is uh his wife and him wendy and brian who do the book so they 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 did their own thing so when i read from here this is when it, when it's this first person talking this is actually jessica um so just to give you a little bit of backstory on that okay one morning recently i was having breakfast at the local cafe and my favorite waitress peggy stopped by my table and asked what i was working on I showed her my scribbled in copy of Good Fairies, Bad Fairies and explained that I was choosing the cards for an oracle deck. Of course, the fairies were choosing them, but I didn't necessarily want to explain that to the whole cafe. Peggy had been having a bad morning with difficult customers and she had reached her stress point where she was dropping and spilling things, which only made matters worse. I encouraged her to pause for a bit since the cafe wasn't really busy and take a look at the fairy pictures. She thought the she thought she couldn't, but I employed the Piper's Wiles, card number 24, of friendly coaxing, and she took a little time at, out to look. When Peggy got to the page of the fairy godmother, she stopped and smiled. Oh, yes, she said. She must be in the deck. Definitely she must. The longer Peggy looked at her, the bigger her smile grew, and the more insistent she was that I include this, I, that I include Sire in the deck. When she went back to work, I noticed that she still had a little smile on her face, and her whole <laughs> energy had changed. Things that were not jumping out of her hands any longer either. Gosh, I just got really like this swell of emotion. 
coming in with the fairy godmother. Let me see if I can get this one. Yeah, just hard with that other card because it is kind of out of focus to begin with. There's your fairy godmother. And look at all that light. Look at all the, look at her branches. Look at her flowers. She has the apple. She has a, uh, a pearl. Um, and there, uh, she definitely has, she has the owl next to her up in that up left-hand corner. Um, and other fairies are with her as well. I encourage you to look up these cards online so you can get a really close up look, you know, um, so you can really tap in. Uh, but okay, so let me continue here. This is how Sairi, the fairy godmother, works. She gives us grace to help us along our way. It might be a little touch of fairy dust to lift a mood. It might be a conspiracy conspicuous miracle it might be anything in between she protects us from the ill will and plain stupidity of others and from our own mistakes she untangles the snarls in our psyches and bestows gifts upon us whatever she feels we need sometimes she gives us choices when we thought we had none grace is a good fortune when we we get from the universe when when we don't deserve it. In fact, deserving or not deserving is not the issue. We are, and therefore, we are loved. It is that simple. Sairi, the fairy godmother, is a giver of grace and occasionally, quite often, in fact, of useful lessons. She tries not to interfere with our learning processes, but she adds that little touch of fairy grace that helps us to learn a little faster sometimes. The fairy godmother is the only one to wear a crown of stars, flowers, and branches, which says a lot about her. Luckily, each of us has a fairy godmother to provide the extras that our guardian angels are often too busy to think about. Fairy godmothers in general are well known for their love and and parties. Don't forget to invite them to your festivities and special occasions like Mother's Day. Ugh. She's coming in so strong. It is like really overwhelming. Like my heart feels like oh, it's like big time right now. I, these connections with these cards and through these cards are no joke for realsies like seriously <laughs> uh, yeah okay <laughs> sorry um <laughs> the fairy godmother glows through us as we perform loving and appropriate kindness for others and develop our capacity for unconditional love and Sairi offers last minute rescues. When she turns up in our readings, good things may well be happening that we don't think we deserve or that we do deserve but haven't thought to ask for. Almost imperceptibly, she teaches us about giving and receiving unconditionally, helping us to open our hearts to love and acceptance. She sometimes show showers us with abundance. Keep an eye out for unexpected good fortune, especially when you thought you saw bad luck headed your way. Remember to say thank you by passing a kindness on to someone else. Practice a little fairy godmothering yourself and see how enjoyable it is. Part of the fun of it is to do it so that the recipient doesn't know where the gift came from. And I'm going to read the reverse because I like that contrast. As you know, it's my thing if you watch me. Where we block the fairy godmother from our daily lives, things are hard. Sorry, when we block the, the fairy godmother from our lives, things are harder than they need to be. When we attempt to live without the grace of the fairies and of heaven, life is an uphill struggle. Oh, seriously. <laughs> when we twist this energy, we become judgmental and get tied in knots trying to decide who is worthy and who is not. We tie strings to everything we offer others and then we trip over them. At worst, we sour our lives, sharing nothing and taking from others. 
becoming the selfish greedy thief in the night instead of the sparkling fairy godmother who glows with the light from within no matter how much that thief accumulates he will never have enough to feel happy or secure or loved so this is truly about acceptance feeling and knowing you're worthy allowing for the i'm hearing all of the others the others the unseen those like the fairy godmother who um <laughs> who is so amazing at if you if you allow for these energies to come in and be a part of your life fairy godmother energy is so good at it's just like a like the quintessential perfect idealistic idea of a grandmother but magical so like if whatever and however you need whatever it is that you need this fairy godmother is like providing that for you you know what i mean like whatever it is and she says here like even you know certain lessons that you need to 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 learn um she doesn't like to get in the way but she likes to inspire through love and and that that uh connectedness um to uh, magical things that we can experience in our life to be open to those things like it says we we have this um sometimes she showers us with abundance and it's true and as i was reading that and like this whole thing this whole thing about you know gifts and and generosity and abundance and things that'll just like happen you'll be like whoa where is this coming from that kind of thing i experienced that today as um as you can probably see back here i have a beautiful bunch of tulips um that was gifted to me by um a friend who owns the local flower shop here and she was in such a tremendous mood today she saw me she's like oh my god there you are because i didn't get there until she was practically closed because i was working i'm gonna have to fix that later oh because she because i was working all day and um and she she gave me a bouquet of flowers that she she was selling the exact same thing well in a vase and everything but still she was selling the exact same thing with roses these roses we see here in this um oh gosh i can never remember the name of this beautiful thing but i'm gonna pull it out to show you guys because it is oh gosh i can't remember the name of it right now but this beautiful thing <laughs> this beautiful thing and so she gave me a bouquet that like she was selling for basically fifty dollars to everybody and she's like you're here i have a kiss for you and she starts pulling it all together and i was like oh i love the rose she gave me this rose last time in, in my flower like it was a surprise when i opened up all the flowers that i bought because i buy flowers almost every week from her if not like if i can't get because she's only open right now two days a week but if i can't get there then it's every other week but typically it's every week and she had given me this rose and anyway she gave me like this amazing arrangement with my favorite which is with which is lilies um and i have this huge lily stock with it that's like massive and all of these flowers and then i was like oh look at those tulips she had them in this whole like thing and she's like oh let me give them to you she pulled them all out and stuck them with all the rest of them which is this pile of flowers and i was just like oh and everybody's like looking or looking at her like what is happening <laughs> like she's just giving me all these flowers and i was thinking like oh my gosh the and she was just it was just this energy coming from her that i gotta say like i mean she's very she's very sweet and very generous but it was just something special going on today and she's like oh my nursery opened up and she took me back there and she showed me her nursery and it was just so beautiful and she's very very connected to the fairy realm and and so reading this about the fairy godmother it was like i could just see like as i was reading that i just felt this like this presence is gonna get me like emotional as <laughs> i didn't pick up on it at the time but now that i'm getting into this and I, she started to like show me flashes of being in the store and all the flowers and this whole thing it was like oh is 
like she's like i inspired her to 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 like she's like this came in because you know to really not like it's hard to explain it it's like it, it it was shannon's i you know shannon came from shannon but it was also the inspired by this energy to like do this and get in like to give me all of that it was just like so amazing and i just felt this energy so it was like you know i was inspired to share that with you um whew, so I, like I said, her energy is very, very warm. And I'm very, very warm right now. It's very warm, very loving. It's just like very similar actually to Jesus energy. So if you're somebody who is connected to Jesus, but um, like that kind of like syrupy, caramel, warm, like just it just flows in you and through you and you feel it so, so deeply. Okay, I can go on with her forever. So there's the fairy godmother and what she's uh, also bringing in for you right now is just you know wanting you to to know that you are loved exactly for who you are um and that the love you feel for whomever you feel it for is exactly what it's supposed to be there's no such thing as loving wrong and not and loving the wrong person or anything like that love is love sometimes things don't always work out but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with love sometimes we impose certain restrictions on ourselves which hinders the flow of love and that is the pain that we can feel and it creates a dissonance in relationships so we get confused with what love really is okay and then let's move on to the singer of healing uh that is card number 10. Okay. Healing the body, mind, and spirit. The song of this singer has the power of healing deep wounds of the spirit, wounds that can destroy mortals and immortals alike. Faith betrayed, love dishonored, trust abandoned, and other injuries of the spirit all inflict serious wounds, which are reflected in the body's illness and injuries. Through the song of healing, we may be restored and renewed, but only if the wounded one is prepared to forgive and let go returning to love and compassion as always with all gifts of spirit healing is offered not forced and requires active participation on our part absolutely true healing must take place on all levels at once body mind and spirit these levels are inextricably linked all one piece and we cannot Expect to change one without changing the others. Our bodies do not do things all on their own. The links between different aspects of being are many, complex, and often obscure. And yet, the principle of healing of healing them is simplicity itself. We need only to let go of the things that are hurting us and nurture ourselves with the things that benefit us. So simple, so difficult. <laughs> The song of healing is present everywhere. And like the other aspects of the great song of ecstasis, it is without limit. Healing can seem so complex as we dig our way through all our blocks and resistances and old stuff. But in the end, it is simply letting go and opening up. Please see page 201 for a little more on healing. Learn everything you can from others there is a lot of good inform information out there. Just keep the essential simplicity of the process in mind and you won't go far. What? And you won't go far wrong. Okay. Um, and this is the healer's card. And it's presence in a reading may speak of healing to be given or of healing to be received. The circumstances and processes of reaching well-being may seem easy or they may bring great challenges in either case we are asked to participate in our own healing as we are strengthened by the singer more usually the singer speaks of both giving and receiving because we cannot truly and freely give without receiving as well healing is something that flows through us not from us and as such we are in a inevitably affected by its passage drawing this card tells us 
both of a need and an opportunity for healing ourselves and perhaps others as well. As, as Warren, one of my teachers said, healing is not something you do. It's something you are and reversed. When illness of the body, mind, or spirit, spirit prevails and we feel disconnected from the great song of healing the question we need to ask ourselves is what feelings or ideas or beliefs am i holding on to that keep my wounds open and unhealed and what can i do to nurture myself and open to the song of healing and right when i said healing it dinged again and this is why i'm guided not to turn off my my chimes um because it's like we're getting these things at a very specific times here okay so being a healer i can definitely speak to this you don't heal others without also on in some way feeling that energy of healing every time i'm done with the healing i feel so I and mean, people ask me they're like do you, does it wear you out? Do you get tired? How do you feel? And I'm like, oh my God, I feel amazing. I feel amazing. I mean, I may be tired, but I feel amazing. And especially for my Evolve Now program healings, those are like four and a half hour healing sessions uh, a piece. And there's two that are with that, that program. And yeah, those are intense. <laughs> those are really intense. It's like running a marathon um, energetically, truly. Um, but I feel amazing afterwards and and I know the receivers do too for for sure um so in this case know that as you heal the wounds of your past your experiences your relationships and your soul and your and your you know your karma your energy your uh the theme the archetype story that's going on that you're living in right now as it's attached to past lives and all that good stuff is the the need to understand that when you when you work on you know this present you're healing so much more than just your current energies or whatever that it goes so much deeper than that and really depending on how you're healing too depends on how you know how you know the type of healing or the effort you put into it and and all of that um but it's clear here that the singer of healing is coming through to tell you that you definitely have healing to do in the re in this regard of of uh this relationship stuff, this stuff with the divine feminine and the divine masculine, um, having this, you know, inner conflict, uh, and, you know, feeling, feeling pulled in, in a different direction. Um, and maybe this could be new too, because starting about six, seven, eight years ago, well, maybe not that far back. Um, I would say about five to six years ago, six, seven years, because somewhere in there, we started to have a lot of the incoming energies to balance us out on all levels. And this also means with our sexuality. So um, truly as animals that we are, as energetic being, as beings, especially those that are awakening more and more, the feeling of, of not being so heterosexual or even so homosexual or lesbian came into play where people that are heterosexual started to be like okay i'm getting feelings and energies and weird sensations about the same sex and people who are who were into the same sex their whole lives are being like i'm starting to fantasize about the opposite sex what's going on here and and then those that had been in that for a long time just just really you know taking them back to where this all started and all of that and so for different people it's different it's different things but what we have here is definitely this situation with our sexuality our sexual orientation and and while it may be changing or you could be like well i've been on you know i've been out or i've been open or i've been 
you know, fine with all that for a long time. Okay, that's great. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. However, underneath that, you know, outness or or comfort level, there still seems to be this imbalance of energy. Because you can be gay or straight, but you still need to, or what's ideal is that balance of um, divine feminine and divine masculine energies. I'm focusing in on this uh, dragon. So I'm being told to get into this. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Um. Where am I here? Oh. That was water. <laughs> I mean, that was air. Why am I having such a hard time with this book right now? Oh my goodness. There we go. Ace of Water. New emotions, first love, infatuation, attraction, lust, longing, excitement, passion. Okay, well, this makes sense. <laughs> um. And key phases or phrases, an exciting beginning, take a leap of faith, open your heart, follow passion's lead, new experiences or opportunities, new friendship, stop fighting your feelings, fee, free of fear's influence. So there's also that too, this like, if I am fully myself, is that okay? Will I be okay? Will I still be the same as what I have always been and which is not fully myself or fully healed from the past, that sort of thing. Um, so the Ace of Water symbolizes the beginning of new love, new feelings of nervous excitement and experience or starting new relationships. So definitely... Um, so falling in love, um, it says, remember the ace of water does not necessarily symbolize a romantic relationship. You're being asked to allow your desire, passions, and attraction to carry you along in this flow and trust that it will take you to and where you need to be exactly. So that's why it's like, it's not necessarily about any, this isn't a love reading about any one person. This is about your energies and, and allowing for the flow of, of unconditional love energies, um, and the balancing of the divine feminine, the divine masculine, um, and, and digging into where the, there is that inner conflict with yourself and where there has been with others. Maybe um, there's been relationships where <clears throat> because you're, you know, holding back or resisting your own inner self on some level that you that it caused friction with another person um, and this could have happened a few times and it's not to put blame or judgment on things it's just to make you aware that that even though you could say like oh I've been in this relationship or I had that relationship and whatever like really just take a step back and look because Gaia is coming through here to say in order for you to really move forward the way that you're meant to move forward we need to clean up the past we need to clear and heal these energies you're really being guided to to think about this on a deep level and not just about the sexuality stuff i'm really feeling you're an empathic person you're a light worker most likely or at least an empath if you're not like fully active in employing that energy but i really i mean i see them as very similar empath and light workers there's a fine line between them um but you are somebody who is like we have the star fairy here too it's like you're somebody really you know you're also very connected so this could also be like you know one of those things of like who you who you get connected to and all of that stuff and like the the different ways that you feel all that and how that's been for you wow this is really deep and long i can't believe this is so long already we're already at 50 minutes so thanks for being here with me um and i'm gonna get into the uh whoa the crystal oracle here I'm told to get into this to get some more cards see what we whoa that's like 
12 cards that just fell. Um, wow. Okay. Interesting. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to take that chunk. It literally fell in my lap. I'm not sure how many that is. Doesn't really matter. Okay. What do we have? Oh, wow. 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 Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. <laughs> We have angels and spirit guides uh, with upper world and um, angel light. Card number three, right? Or two. Card number two, angels and spirit guides. We have inner wisdom with mother Gaia. Card number 17 with gothite, right? Ah, did it. So literally having Mother Gaia come in with our angels and spirit guides. We have truth and integrity, living by our truth, feeling our truth. I'm just, I love her face. It's like, don't even try to not be authentic and truthful and um, come from a place of integrity. And then we have retreat with mountain and green calcite. Let's see if I can get that sweet spot again. Mountain, green calcite, and retreat. Card number 24. I'm just like, can't with these cards right now. And tree with ancestor healing, amber, and card number one. So if you could see up in that, uh, that branch that's going straight out, it's actually a DNA strand, if you see that. So there's branches and then straight up the tree is a DNA strand with, strand with the branches. Wow. Um, what can I say here? My lovely doctahedron with your 12 sides. Um, we are so getting, we, I mean, my goodness, angels and spirit guides, inner wisdom, truth and integrity, uh, ancestor healing. We have the fairy god mother as well. So look at all this beautiful, um, energy coming in here just with this, uh, just these two cards alone are blowing my, my top with, with the godmother and Gaia. So, I mean, talk about your potent divine feminine. And what did I say from the very top? We're really number one channeling mother Gaia here, um, is the over the umbrella energy and everything is coming through her, her doors opening. And so much so here in this first reading that mother Gaia herself and her card has come through. I thought we were close enough with mother, with the fairy godmother, but we also have our angels and spirit guides, just the whole lot of them. Everybody's here really wanting you to understand how deep this is, how important this is for you as you move forward on your journey, um, that there is, I'm feeling there is a process that's taking place. Definitely. You know it. Mother Gaia knows it. Your guides know it. Um, and whatever you're being guided to to help you through this process and tra transition, it's going to be like a total renewed you, rebirthing type of energy because you're going to like surrender those like that letting go, like what was said with the singer of healing. Like it takes you needing to release and and wanting to let that go it's the same kind of like healing and forgiveness are very close it takes that that letting go of the energy that's keeping you mad upset um feeling 
uh, hurt, sad, and fear, depressed, like all of those types of energies that are so potently negative that really starts to add to the quote of our unwellness if you will, um, on every level. And just like it said in that with the singer of healing, we need to heal body, mind, spirit. Um, so I hear from a lot of people, they'll come to me and they'll be like, I've been to other healers and I felt better a little bit, but it came back or it's not great or whatever. And a lot of times it's because they're focused on, on a symptom, on getting rid of a certain physical pain or an emotional thing, but it's not like deeply connecting on an energetic level, like, like, like a shaman does, like I do, because we connect with Mother Gaia. We go so deep and so high into the upper worlds, like this says, angels and spirit guides. That's where we go to heal. We go so we go into such a high dimension for healing. Um, that it does work on all of those levels. And if you go to my website you'll and you read about what I do and um, energy and energy bodies and how that whole process um, is done in it, what in what I do, it's very much all about that. It's about healing in all of the levels because you can't just heal one aspect and you can't expect like healing on on, you know, to feel totally better if you're just focused on one thing. You have to look at the whole big picture. But this for you is coming through to say there is, this is the next, the next phase, the next knot to unravel for yourself because you've been unraveling um, knots for yourself and setting and, and releasing and moving and, and on your way. And this is the next thing. And, and this portal, this thinning of the energy or that veil coming through at this time to help us um, with this Mother's Day divine feminine energy to really nurture us and support us and guide us and and you know how this says this is Mother Gaia with inner wisdom it's like fine she's like when you decide to go there, the door is open for you to see what's behind there, to see what, what that is. That inner wisdom is is just ready to be tapped into. It's just putting a light on it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, wow. Okay. I can't get over this right now. This is a really, this is really interesting. Um, okay. And... Lastly, we're going to get into the fairy oracle. Uh, so here it goes with the wild wisdom of the fairy oracle. Huh. The gift. The gift. And oh gosh, this card. Yeah, these two cards turned over and I thought we were just going to get one, but nope, being told we have these two. Um, the gift, a present and offer, nurturance, growth, potential, and let me show you this one. Card number 47. <laughs> so cute. And card number 47 fairy lovers we got this card in the pisces reading um spoiler alert for may 2021 and it was just awesome energy new love courtship romance falling in love so we actually got this kind of energy twice um with uh Oh, with the Ace of Water, also possibly even with the Returning, that could be part of that. But here we go with Fairy Lovers. So what this is telling me is that with the Fairy Lovers, that's just, it's literally about finding new love and romantic partnerships and, and coming into union with somebody that's just like soul mated and it's just like the very magical magical type of energy this sort of thing so what i'm being pointed to with this because they weren't letting me let it go um and they're like no this is definitely here so 
the energy that you need to understand here is once you get through and you and you dig deep and you raise your your level here in frequency you go through healing however you're guided to do it you will most definitely um on the other side of that uh, come into a, a new place in, in within yourself so you can connect to a new love. Or if you are already in union, renewed love with your partner. It is you're going to activate them for their own healing. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, or it could be um, a little bit of a challenge to navigate that if, if that's the case. But... I'm feeling for the most part, I'm talking to people who are, are single, who aren't in union and probably haven't been for a while. But of course, you know, that's not always the case. I am feeling that there is um, definitely a, a smaller set of people who are in a relationship. This also may be the catalyst for you to be like, yeah, but that's not the way that this is with this person. And this might be that wake up call to surrender and let this go let this relationship go um especially if this is something that you've been thinking about a lot recently is the fact that you know maybe we're just kind of going like this and or like this like you're rising and they're just staying level and maybe even dipping down because you're rising and they're resisting that. And if that's the case and you feel that pull energetically, you can try to cut cords, like I said in the beginning, um, see if that helps. But it may be time to consider, you know, this is the time to really come to terms with this, to heal this by being honest and having this, this inner knowing truth and integrity about really what's going on. Um and i'm feeling with the fairy lovers on top of this ancestor healing that that whatever union is coming for you it is again soulmate because ancestor healing this is you and this person going through lifetimes together and and having a connection in your very dna um through time and this is something that people kind of don't really sometimes think about is that soulmates can share dna on a on a on a on a level that that is very ancestral and and those people are pulled together to help heal the heal that energy um together and so fairy lovers is coming in with that right now so this is very um this is all to like get you to a point of readiness for this type of relationship and this gift is definitely part of it so i am going to get into the gift hey there so it is the next day and luckily you saw that video up until then because it all didn't get deleted there was a part at the end that glitched out and after many attempts to save it i was guided uh this morning i woke up and it was really funny it was trying to, to export and last night it started with like it'll export in 30 minutes it'll export in three hours and when i woke up this morning it was hilarious that that um i took a screenshot of it because it was like <laughs> it will export in like and it had like 12 numbers and hour and then it said hours it'll export in like a million hours <laughs> no joke i was like oh this is hilarious i've never seen anything like this so anyway i was guided to cut off the end where i uh was just a, a couple minutes into reading about the gift so i'm gonna pick up here with the gift here take a look at the card again it is absolutely adorable i love it and a present and offer nurturance growth potential so so in alignment with everything we got here um so let's get into it and happy mother's day by the way 
Uh, I thought I would do all of the readings last night, but yeah, it didn't happen. Okay, so anyway, here we go. This shy gnome is offering this beautiful fairy maiden a gift. It could be of love, a friendship, or a magical present that will bring her new strength and attract great abundance. The question is, will she accept this offering? Because if she does, it will have many benefits. You see, gnomes are deeply connected to the element of earth. And as such, they are wonderful manifestors able to transform the simple fact of earth into jewels and riches. Food and new life, bright, strong health, and a glorious new love. As the creators and keepers of the Earth's wealth, they may appear endearingly small and somewhat unassuming, but there is no more powerful fairy being to work with. When they offer you this gift, take it seriously, for while it may look humble, it will lead you to a great source of magical growth and potential. When this beautiful card makes an appearance, know that a person or being who is very down, down to Earth may be about to make you a good offer. The more grounded you are at present, the better use you will make of this gift. Another being who is often misunderstood. Uh, sorry. An <laughs> I'll try that again. <laughs> Take three. Another being who is often underestimated will propose something to you. And while you may not think so much of it in the present moment, great things may come of this. The person offering you the gift has an urge to protect and care for you, to nurture your special talents and skills. And they truly wish for nothing in return except your good wishes and thoughts. Best of all, perhaps is that this small gift will earth us, enabling us to ground, root, and grow our dreams and desires. For those of us who are perhaps more ethereal and less able to take the time to grow our dreams, this is a most fortuitous, fortuitous sign. For instead of moving too quickly from one project to another, those of us who are unable to work well with our finances and who lack a feeling of being earthed, there's no more wondrous and helpful an elemental creature than the gift of a wise and learned and rather sweet looking gnome. <sighs> I love gnomes. <laughs> when given this, when, ugh, why? I'm sorry. <laughs> when given with such respect, goodwill, and reverence, this gift will always assist you as long as that which you work or cast for is in the best interests of mother earth and her creatures this gift may assist you with memory problems crystal healing crystals healing animals gardening issues tree magic not magic fertility and any issues to do with brothers and sisters especially twins or people born on or near the same day very interesting okay and divinatory meanings a gift which has to do with your well-being, health, and transformation. A proposal to help you change your life that is small and not in the, in the least grand or glittery, but which has enormous substance and potential to it. Work with your hands. The arts of working and with earthly elements is encouraged and supported by the fae silversmith, blacksmith, jeweler, nurse, farmer, veterinarian, energy healer, animal lover, con cons conservationist. Uh, builder, eco-mystic. I've never heard that term before, eco-mystic, but I love it. Peaceful resolution to trivial per disputes. The de-escalation of disagreements through tenacity, focus, strength, courage, and through research and investigation. Don't forget love. Reverence for beauty. Inspiration from the earth for jewelers, artisans, and craftspeople working with the ores and stones of the earth. Oh, man, I just got a major chill. Ooh, something's coming. <laughs> oh, the fae also make you tend to make you very giddy and, 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 um, uh, giggly I find uh, when they're especially giving you good news you get like super like giggly giggles like they they've made me giggle my entire life <laughs> okay sorry I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm just feeling I'm big time right now oh my goodness um 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that over. Reverence for beauty. Inspiration from the earth for jewelers, artisans, and craftspeople working with the ores and stones of the earth. In coveting, sorry, in converting our ideas ideas into reality by revealing to us the practical elemental processes that need to take place in order for us to bring our visions into into the material plane is an enduring and earthly fashion in an enduring and earthly fashion gosh i am making up words <laughs> don't mind my dyslexia uh, respect for the innate usefulness of all things, which so many of us cannot see. This card indicates you would do well to take on the view that is, sorry, that all has purpose, which is the antithesis of the disposable culture we live in now. So very true. Think about what you use, what you're throwing away. Can it be repurposed? If not you, somebody else can use it for something else. Uh, without being a hoarder, of course, because that's not good either. <laughs> um, make the most of what you have and the gifts from the earthly realm of the gnomes will come forth in abundance. Oh my goodness. I love this so much. The energy is just... Okay, and I like to read the reverse meanings because it gives us contrast. So um, here we go. And just greater insight into the energies. You may feel the urge to make a gift to another being to whom you are drawn. The reverse meaning of this card may also mean that it is time to care for animals and small things around you. You may need healing, who may need healing and nursing. Investigate alternative energy methods methods of healing animals when this card is drawn simply search for a down-to-earth and humble practitioner of great integrity hey that would be me it may be time to seek wise assistance to lose weight and transform your physical self in a practical sensible healthful and loving manner again hi that would be me <laughs> um okay so Oh my goodness. It's just such great energy with this. The gift. I mean, my goodness. Wow. I just, wow. Um, it's also an 11, an 11 energy, which is um, pillars of creation. That deep connectedness with all and your purpose and those who are, are connected meant to be connected to you and to help you and soul soul connections and all of that and and um his gift that he has if you could see is a beautiful flower check it out you can see that and uh uh something is going to come to assist you to help you very well like the like the card said here be a person with a specific offer some type of gift and it may not seem so grand at first but but uh humans tend to be i'm seeing like humans tend to be very short-sighted very short-sighted very in the now and i know we get kind of like mixed messages it's like be mindful be in the now don't project blah 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 but then at the same time to not have to not be able to see far into the future and what things can mean going forward ding ding <laughs> um is uh, is very short-sighted we tend to just see right now like what's good for us now what do we need now what don't we like now what is comfortable or uncomfortable now and and we need to expand that vision a little bit more and see into our future. Okay, so uh, other than that with this card, um, definitely speaking about, I was hearing just, if you don't already have, uh, oh, I don't have my one ring on, I took it off. I'm like, no wonder why I feel weird. I'm gonna have to go get that. Um, but if you don't already wear jewelry with crystals and and like copper, silver, of course gold is great too, but 
but definitely um and and stones like i have what's all the let me tell you all the crystals i have on me i have abalone in two places moonstone i have mermaid glass which, which is of of the earth and of and glass is just a culmination of many many rocks and crystals that are just broken down and then processed which i am if you come into my home you'll see so much glass and and vases and anything of glass and crystal it's just it's it's so magical anyway and then i have labradorite obsidian um uh amber tanzanite more labradorite and this is my my mystery my mystery crystal but um clear quartz it's i call it um opaque rainbow light clear quartz because while it looks opaque and dark when you hold it up to the sun it's completely see-through it's a mystery crystal um that was definitely a magical gift so anyway the more that you can have on you as far as crystals and metals and that kind of thing uh, will definitely help ground you so it's not just for like adornment and looking pretty it they're functional in so many ways so that came through so if you're not somebody who already wears rings and bracelets necklaces earrings I, I don't do earrings but I do all the rest of it um, start to get into that you know space for yourself and um start just thinking about it like open up to like you know what it would be like a necklace and and what what should they should that be a crystal should that um uh be a metal uh pendant with a crystal i d i suggest loading up on crystals that are meaningful to you protective but also open you up your psychic abilities your ability to connect with spirit you know that whole thing um and then if you already wear jewelry just take a a look at what it is that you have on you and why you wear it and what it means what it represents what's the symbology what the connection is does it still resonate with you are you just wearing things because you've worn them for so long we tend to be creatures of habit for sure so that came up here and um just the general just the general um energy of receiving is really what's coming through here the gift means to receive and receive love receive abundance receive guidance receive report receive um that i'm feeling gaia receive the loving um nurturing energy of gaia and let her guide you uh to more gifts this is her domain we live here she guides us to um what is best for us if we let her and her helpers who are the the gnomes um as this card said um one of her greatest helpers are the gnomes and for those of us who are lucky enough to connect with that energy and and really feel into it um we do receive great gifts um of the earth and uh and of love in so many different ways okay we're done here <laughs> i want to thank you so much for being here i want to uh wish you a beautiful rest of may of course mother's day wishes to you and yours uh gaia chiming in just to tell you how much she loves you how grateful she is that you're a part of her world um how much she adores you and wants only the best for you so open up to her love and guidance and if you're guided to work with me and gaia like uh we work so closely together i would love to hear from you but there's also great resources on my website that we don't you know you don't have to pay for ebooks uh self-healing meditations uh again if you haven't done the full moon uh one yet i highly recommend it i will be doing um one here for the stargate it's really interesting it'll be like in the middle of the stargate but that's where i'm guided to do it but anyway other than that thank you so much for being here don't forget to like share and subscribe and until next time infinite love and blessings bye for now
Hey there, lovely soul. Thanks for joining me. You picked the octahedron. So let's get into the octahedron right off the bat here. Being guided to throw the dice. What number do we get? We get number three. you to see there you go um so we got the three the three representing ascended masters and love unconditional love that ooh, look at that right off the bat here we have the king of earth oh awesome okay i'll show you the cards once i get them all so let's definitely want that one too Five of water. Okay. Oh, all righty. King of air. The ten of air. The four of fire and healing. Oh, I love it. I'm hearing they're all right side up. So let me share this with you here. Oh, and on the flip is the nine of fire. Wow. Okay. Interesting with this masculine energy coming through. And again, these are messages from Gaia and the Divine Feminine. So really cool with this Earth of, uh, sorry, King of Earth. Then we have the Five of Water. Then we have the King of Air. Then we have the Ten of Air. Then we have the uh, Four of Fire. And lastly, Healing. So with this, with this uh, Healing card, noticing that Pentacle, um, we have a frog, we have two frogs, we have the Celtic knot, oh no, three frogs, uh, trees, water, that staff with the, with the snake, um, always representing healers and healing, um, and the snake or, uh, represents healing because of, you know, shedding the old and becoming something new, um, so yeah, healing, Okay, so let me tap in here with the cards and the message here. Okay, so really strong energy coming in here to heal. Uh, it's like, it's like, yeah, I got the healing card. Uh, see this five of cups or five of water. This is being like disappointed, hurt. Um, I got to turn off this light. I can't look at the camera like that. It'll fry my brain. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, this five of, of cups is telling a big story here with like disappointment in, from the past. And I'm feeling kind of a couple things with these air cards that it's like, or the king cards, the king of earth and the king of, of air. Um, so yeah, so there's a good amount of, of, pain, disappointment, sadness when it comes to uh, kind of feelings that that are going on right now or stuff that you've been dealing with in the especially in the sense of dealing with 
men that are close to you or divine masculine energy so it could be a female that you're dealing with say it's your mother even that's very masculine in energy um and and not so nurturing or there's masculine definite males masculines who um have had a influence on you that was um, more negatively charged and to come in to help you with this energy to clear and heal this energy are these three very very potent masculines is we have three feminines here depicted here we have the mermaid um, be, um underwater but the sun is coming through if you see this she's like she's processing and and that sun is coming through the sun rays are coming through uh and then we have the ten of air another feminine card um and that is like seeing she's facing away from us and she's facing out and then we have the um this feminine here with the uh four of fire so but we have so we it's balanced here we have six cards but the the masculine energy here is very strong um and because we have the the king of earth and the king of air so that masculine divine masculine type energy is coming in a along with the healing card which is showing us a masculine energy here um just to say that healing needs to be done on the uh, on this level so you can balance out the divine masculine and feminine within yourself uh, because until you like there's this kind of like having this negative feels towards masculine and it could be subconscious it could not like you may not realize like how how that affects you on a cellular level on an energetic level that like you're still pushing away the masculine because of of bad maybe even abusive and traumatic events in your past when it comes to um i'm gonna get to the i'm gonna go into the crystal cards when it when it comes to the uh the masculine or male so it could be your father it could be boyfriends it could be um people are supposed to be mentors uncles even people that you worked with even men that you may have worked with could have been real assholes like i'm just gonna say it like narcissistic dicks and i don't know I can have a potty mouth. I don't have a problem with it. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, mean, I, I was going to go off on a whole thing, but I'm not. Um, yeah, so the king of earth and the king of air need you to consider really go coming from a place in your soul to understand that... Um, and you know this of course not all men are evil and bad and abusive it's of course not but when you have such like deep like hurts for men or you know you've had that experience with them in the past it's gonna be like your first reaction to getting close to a man to being intimate with a man to allowing a man to show you love and protection and and nurture and their own you know nurturing and unconditional love is like <laughs> you stay away from me kind of energy and that's not in balance and these readings are all about mother gaia coming in to tell you what you need to he what needs healing what, what what well it wasn't specifically about that but it's kind of turning into that um but that's her bag man that's her thing this is why she works with me in all of her in all of my healing she's the one who started that it wasn't me i wasn't like i'm gonna work with gaia and healing like that would never occur to me she's the one who came and said we're gonna help people heal and and that is what we've been doing. It's been friggin' amazing. But 
I digress. Her message here is the divine masculine is needs healing within you. And archangels uh, like Michael is coming through very strongly. And he was from the very top. But I didn't want to distract with that before I got that message out. Archangels, ascended masters. We did get the three, right? So if you're somebody who has reverence and connects with those like Jesus, um, Buddha, Krishna, um, Shiva, like any, any of these that like, you know, are revered, um, the dragons, definitely that, that male energy of the dragons, uh, definitely is what is in order let's see here we have going within inner world with boji stones card number 13 so let me turn this on again don't mind me don't mind me but i want you to see as best as you can there we go that seems to be a good angle going within then we have mountain with retreat keep getting this card literally like it is a thing um as we got this in the last read too it's been coming out in a lot of reads i live on a mountain this is retreat mountain card number 24 um green calcite let me see if i can find that sweet spot there we go green calcite with retreat Next, we have angels and spirit guides, upper world with angel light. We also got this card in the last reading. So she's really employing everybody, the fae, the angels, spirit guides. Like I said, the archangels are really coming through very strongly. I'm feeling Uriel, Metatron, Michael, Raphael, Ga uh, well, Gabriel isn't um, male, although it that's, well, that's a whole other thing. But definitely feeling Gabriel here as well, holding hands with Gaia to come in and help with healing, going within. Really, it's like you've blocked. It's like you're just like, that's just going to always be that way. This is how I'm going to feel if you're really, you know, conscious of it. But it's, but if you really connect with your, with your, uh, we want more here. If you really connect with your, soul you'll know that that's not the way it's supposed to be like you're not supposed to be in this five of cups energy forever it's only it's like it's it's there for a reason and and also think beyond this lifetime whoa here we go think beyond this lifetime uh we got moving forward oh i love it moving forward with air energy so we did get we are getting a lot of air so air wind energy wanting to blow this out and that's also kind of telling me that like if you really decide to to cut cords to do energy healing um to dig deep and allow for this for this energy to lift up and release like once you make these constant consciousness <laughs> conscious decisions for healing that you will be able to release because your angels and spirit guides and Gaia will very much assist you so to open up to the guidance for that we got crystal blessing with grandmother crystal deva or diva and um, cathedral library is the crystal and it's the eight card. So using crystals will be very helpful for you to connect with Gaia to receive your downloads um, that are meant for you. Uh, I'm going to be coming out. I keep saying this. It's just time. So many hours in the day. Um, but I do have a, a an article on crystal on the importance of crystals and how oh this is awesome and um how they work they work to download information for us for, for um for us to integrate with it's like a, a natural usb device that automatically receives or like a satellite from above that automatically sends you information the last card here from the Crystal Reading Oracle is Rebirth with Spring. That's where we're at right now with Shiva Lingam. I, let me show you my Shiva Lingam. 
I have two, but I was guided to get, uh, if you saw my last pick, pick a card, uh, the first option was the Shiva Lingam. It's an awesome crystal. If you don't have one, excuse me, I highly recommend you get Shiva Lingam because it is, it checks, if you read about it, it checks every box you could ever want in a crystal. And the reason for that shape is um, that they come, I can't remember the river, but I think it's in India, but they, they come out, they're tumbled in this river. So it's a natural um, shape. Here's my other one. So they'll have different looks, of course, more brown, more of this like tan color or gray color. Um, but they're really cool. They're, they get very cold, but as soon as you start like holding them and connecting with them, you get super grounded and it gets super hot, like really fast and it's so warm. It feels so good. Anyway, so healing, rebirth, crystal blessing, angel spirit guides, your king of earth and fire. Um, I'm feeling it's really interesting here really interesting here the way these cards are lining up let me show you <clears throat> let me show you king of earth and going within and how similar these colors are and what that looks like um with the tree with the uh and the going within card and then with that king of earth they're really similar and they're right i just happened to the plate they placed them right next to each other and then the other two that are very similar that are getting my attention are the king of air and retreat because king of air and mountain right so mountains trust me tend to be windy and, and airy because you're up in the mountains and the air can flow so freely this is one of the the great uh perks to living in the mountains aside from fairies and being close to, closer to Gaia and away from a lot of people. I mean, I could go on and on with the benefits of living in the mountains or being in the mountains. But one of those benefits is air. The the vibration of air, the wind, the air flowing and just con this like it feels so good with air moving, moving, moving. And so you have king of air and mountain feeling air energy. We have king of earth with the with the going within with this beautiful tr humongous tree. Um, so and rebirth. It's just like time for you to consider letting go of these past um, and forgiveness. I'm hearing forgiveness is coming up here. Um, I'm being told to crack open the book on this healing card. So that is the 11 and the 11. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. Because for some reason, the way these, the way when you flip through this book, it, it does everything, but sh it shows you like everything in between, but not the main pages. It's really kind of strange. Um, 75. Okay. So here's that. Let me show you the healing card again. Go ahead and connect with that. The last card that came out in the tarot, healing, release, purification, forgiveness. There you go. Transformation, infection. To be human is to be wounded. A time to connect to body, mind, spirit, and soul. Let go of definitions and labels. Nurture passions and seek pleasure, authenticity, honesty, and laughter. Find the source of disease and distress. You need to forgive do what's necessary to increase well-being. Do not dwell on the unchangeable past. Shift your attention. Do not allow your pain to hurt others. Seek treatment. Do not be afraid. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all of what I was saying. <laughs> uh, the healing card illustrates our third reason for being. However, it covers healing oh, several, on several levels. And does not necessarily suggest or imply that you are wounded or in need of healing, at least not on a conscious level. A happy, safe, and peaceful life does not always accord us with perfect health and well-being. Every person is vulnerable to disease, whether it manifests in physical, mental, or emotional stress, or as a feeling of emptiness and longing that is born of spiritual wounds. Humans are part of hierarchical. Hierarch 
of a hierarchical race. I'm having a hard time with that word. <laughs> I didn't promise my mouth would work and, and words would make sense today. <laughs> Oh, man. We have a social order with the elite and wealthy at top and the uneducated and poor at the bottom. We are a species that is driven to win with each of us striving to do better, to be better than the generation that came before. Those at the top want to stay there and those at the bottom want to reach the top. We are goal oriented and believe that success moves us forward and failure sets us back. We are on a perpetual quest to improve whether it is our social standing, quality of life, or a simple desire to be a better person. We must be better. We must do better. But what is better in our quest for betterment? Are we making ourselves ill? A lot of times, yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to read this whole thing because it is really long. So let me just skim through here. So the healing card symbolizes a need to reconnect and listen to what your body, mind, and feelings are telling you. To work with them instead of against them. Instead of denying them. Instead of like when the uncomfortable feelings come up that you distract yourself and push them away and, and say, you know, fuck it. I'm not dealing with any of that and, you know, I'm not thinking about that or whatever. Like that sort of thing. Um... Whether it be simple, as simple as addressing a physical ailment or addressing that empty ache that comes from denying ourselves enjoyment and connection, this card signals that it is time to rip off the layers of illusion and protective armor and the mask and look at what lies beneath. Yeah, definitely. And then I'm going to skip here to this part. Is it time for a health check? You might not have visited with... Uh, your chosen health practitioner for a while and it might be time to do so just to make sure that everything is as it should be address any unsolved health issue in the present so that it does not develop into something more problematic in the future um so it symbolizes pain and suffering in the now the importance of addressing it now if you are experiencing any form of pain do not ignore it if you are f feeling burdened or weighted by emotion, whether guilt, fear, remorse, jealousy, or regret, do not ignore it. So I'm going to stop there because that's what this is. It's, it's about past hurts and f being hurt in love, um, in relationships, in with family, those that should, ha should have been um protective nurturing there for you protective of you let you down um and this could be more recent too but i kind of feel this is more past um that you're in a place now where you can you can rise above being in the situation and see it from a further away perspective to understand it a little bit better um and see it from a spiritual standpoint see the people involved or the persons involved um individually or if it was a collective situation try to see past their human identity and personality that boggles your brain that just goes how the hell you know especially if you're dealing with narcissists and you know that they were narcissists um and it still just twists you up inside i would highly suggest um cut cu gosh i can't talk cord cutting um and please if you've tried it you're like oh it doesn't work or this or that or whatever it does work it's just that most cord cutting um healing meditations are are aggressive and they're like use a sword use a knife use scissors and that is not what the the way to heal you don't heal through aggression you don't heal through through um pain like that you heal through love this is why our heart chakra extends through our arms and our hands and as healers we use love as as healing i channel infinite love light energy to infuse with the body to eliminate pain and and love it's like the purest highest vibration of love energy and when you do the cord cutting that i channeled um it is one of it's like the most popular um 
episode on my podcast. It's the thing, it's my most popular ebook on my website that is free, by the way. So please download the importance of cord cutting ebook, read that ebook, and do the meditation. Uh, meditations, read the, uh, listen to the podcast as well, because this will really help you understand, as well as my, my latest video in the Empath series, which is about empaths and narcissists. And if you see it from an energetic, kind of scientific understanding of how people are twisted in different ways, it'll help you to disconnect the emotion and see it from a from a from a more, like I said, scientific type of situation, um, which would be really, really good for you. So do that. And aside from that, just going as guided, just doing a lot of meditation in general, um, the body love and connecting with your guardian angel meditation would be like also on the top, maybe even above, uh, definitely above the cord cutting actually. So uh, I would definitely do that. I'm being pointed to show you that. Uh, and rebirth here. Just know that, and that's like another three. So we have your dice that came through was a three, and this card is a th is a three. It's a twenty one. Um, so that right. Yeah, so that's a three. I'm being pointed to that uh, and rebirth. So you're being guided by high, high level spirit guides and guardians, um, like angel, like literally, like archangels or like we're gonna. That's what. That's who came for me when I needed healing on multiple levels. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a story. <laughs> but they are definitely coming through for you. They want you to. They want you to be precise and targeted and intentional in this. Not just like, okay, I'll forgive, uh, whatever. Like really needing to be targeted in your energy, intention, whether it's working with someone like me in a very targeted, intentional manner where you're like, I need to release this energy. Please help me. Connect me with Gaia. Connect me with my guides and my spirit and my soul. You know, there's different ways to heal. Um, but of course, I'm going to always be impartial or partial to mine, um, which is shamanic, which is deep, which is spiritual, which is all levels. Like it talked about healing. It's it's not just dealing with the physical, dealing with the energy or dealing with the emotions. It's like you can go to different practitioners and deal with different pieces of yourself or you can see a shaman um and that deals with all levels that's what a shaman is we go into all levels of being emotional physical energetic and and spiritual because you can't just you can't tackle a whole problem by just like targeting the side of it like it doesn't work that way so I, like I said I'm partial to that but you are ready to move on you are ready this is a moving on moving forward and again these cards are right underneath each other damn man this is crazy <laughs> the air and the um and the ten of air uh moving forward and the ten of 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 air here is about she's not even facing us she's going so and so it's like going in this direction targeted in this direction going towards healing um knowing that there are so many things to support you in healing like crystals so again please uh think about crystals and how they can help you what they what information they can bring to you and also wearing them putting them on your body um i have abalone pearl moonstone labradorite uh tanzanite and amber just like and I'm guided to these very specific crystals and, and their placement for a reason. And and that is very helpful in healing and keeping your, your energy light. Okay, again, I'm being shown the cord cutting. So please take that seriously. And if you've tried it, if you're like, I tried it and it didn't work, again, please don't be stubborn. Try something different and try the meditation. You go to the healing temple in the, in the channeled meditation that I provide and it's awesome i it's awesome okay so please 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 consider that um let's get into the fairy oracle here i'm being pointed to these two cards let's see what we got we got 
Spirit Dancer and the Pook. Aww. Spirit Dancer. So really needing the spirit to... Spirit Dancer is about allowing for your spirit to be free. And the Pook... Pretty sure the pook is about showing showing you what needs to be what needs to be revealed. But let's get into the book here. We're gonna go to the pook first. What number are you? Oh, my past you. Shape changer, good in bad, bad in good, paradox, resolution pages 66 and 67 and 68 but let's start here the pook is a shape changer he appears in whatever guise he thinks will be most confusing to you depending on his purpose brian wrote he weaves spells to bemuse our senses and confuse our judgment he is a master of the arts of illusion and delusion holding up distort a distorted mirror to reveal the bad and the good and the good and the bad the pook also wishes to show us the bad in what we think to be good and vice versa. This may confuse us further or it may help us to gain a more balanced understanding of how things really are. He's very against rigid-minded sets and... Sorry. <laughs> He is very against rigid mindsets and, in his own way, encourages the development of inquiring minds. His true face? I'm not certain that a shape changer even has a true face, though he did hold still long enough for Brian to paint him. However, the pook is very proud of the faces he assumes. With them, he offers a con offers us contradictions and paradoxes and finds it all too easy to confuse our judgment because we are often not thinking very clearly anyway. Sometimes we even hold two or more co contradictory beliefs in boxes in our own mind. If one is true, we think then we finally, if one is true, we think when we finally consider them, then the other must be false and that's not so. Perhaps both are false. Perhaps both are partly true and partly false. We tend to cling desperately to our beliefs even when they make no sense to others or are counter to our actual experience. Yeah, we, t we can t definitely place things, situ we can place our experiences in certain ways where that's what it is to make us feel com comfortable but it is an illusion that we we need to deconstruct uh our paradoxes and confusions are self-created and the pook need only dress them up a bit and a little sparkle and dangle them before us in order to induce confusion in that confusion, we are likely to believe almost anything someone presents to us just to feel as if we have a metaphorical anchor in reality. His challenge for us is to wake up to stop protecting our confusions on reality. Once we have seen the truth, seeming contradictions and paradoxes melt away. In the matter of realizing the solution to a Zen cone, like what is the sound, what is the sound of one hand clapping? <laughs> um... Okay, uh, and start a reading. It is time for the resolution of seeming contradictions and paradoxes in the situation. Someone or some part of the situation is cloaked in confusion and our muddled thoughts must be stripped away, revealing truth. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because this whole time I was feeling the pook is representing that narcissist archetype in your story and there's been a few and you're an empath and empaths are definitely drawn to and narcissists are drawn to empaths and I get into the hows and whys of that mechanical attraction that energetic attraction in that video the second video empaths and narcissists so I highly suggest that you watch that again I know I'm repeating myself but you know, sometimes we need to hear stuff over and over again for it to, to sink in because that is what the pook was saying to me is this whole like, you know, showing you one thing and being another and who they really are. That sort of thing is very much 
um, the energy of a narcissist is like, what's what? And they confuse you and they make you think that you're the problem. They gaslight you. They they turn things around. They they just, it's you're in a constant state of imbalance. And even when you're far away from this person, that energy is still like it still rattles your brain that like how can somebody be this way how can you know they be so selfish or so manipulative or so hurtful just downright hurtful and abusive um just very much like um and vindictive you could have dealt with very vindictive energy as well so get into that card number 30 is the spirit dancer let's get into her i could work a book and read the words inside of it i would be happy there's your spirit dancer she's absolutely beautiful okay unconditional nope wrong one oh i did this earlier with 30 and 36 <laughs> from the other book in the other reading okay self-expression freedom exploration the spirit dancer understands both sides of self-expression in the first stage we get our inner vision feelings and creative impulse out into the world through our art whatever that is then our expressions are reflected back to us from the mirror of other people's perceptions and we discover that our art <coughs> what our art awakens in them First and most important for many of us, we learn, grow, and lead more satisfying lives if we have ways of expressing our inner world. Such expressions can be a way of helping ourselves better understand our feelings and experiences, or they can be a way of getting pain out where we can look at it and let it begin to heal. There we go. Uh, okay, so... Creative expression is a method of exploring our own truth, bringing it into the light so we can see it more clearly and maintaining, while in ma maintaining sanity. The key words here are explore, experiment, and express. As this very cryptically remarked in one oracle, to one oracle reader, the death of spirit dancer is perfection. Oh my God, I love that. And as an artist myself, um, it's very easy to get locked up in, you know, per perfection and not wanting to mess up your, you know, your creation or whatever it is. And Gaia comes in to say there's no such thing. And Spirit Dancer says the, the death of Spirit Dancer is, is perfection. Because first of all, there's no such thing. That is an illusion that we create to keep ourselves from expanding because that is safer. So perfect. So this need to be perfect is really a way of holding back. And so there's that. Aside from that, the message here is, uh, let me go, let me just skip down here. Um, now is the time to focus and really concentrate on a project or process, especially when involving the creative arts. Spontaneity balanced by self-discipline will help us achieve our goals. Strive for elegance and simplicity. This is a time to bring out and share qualities that we have nurtured in private or ignored i'm hearing or you know just not put our our energy into just maybe because we've you've been upset depressed hurt like the inspiration to create just hasn't been there because because that that lower level energy it has taken over so the light of creation can't come when there's so much shadow on top so much darkness and your angels and spirit guides are just begging you to um, release that darkness and what's going to help you is if you push yourself to create paint draw build um tend to a guard like create something you need to get in that vibration so so your guides can come in more clearly uh that's definitely the message with the spirit dancer she's like the people that this message is for need to remember their creational nature we are created to create period we are created to create and when we're not creating when we're not in that zero point of the infinity we we are out of balance we're either this way or that way and and that 
is always the quest to be in balance, to be in balance. And healing puts us back into balance. Okay. Um, where are we going? Heart of Fairy. Okay. Heart of Fairy. So this is similar to what we did with the first reading. We got a couple from Heart of Fairy and a couple from Woozies. And a couple from The Fairy. They're both by Brian Froud. Um, really super. There we go. Okay. We have The Leaving. And we have The Lady of Unicorns. And the leaving. Let me show you the leaving one more time. Okay, so let me grab this book. This is awesome. Awesome, awesome cards for this. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so you've got two of this like leaving energy. And again, I kind of place them right on top of each other because that 10 of air, remember, and you're moving forward and the leaving, you see this? right on top of each other ten of air moving forward the leaving oh wow <laughs> very clear message here that there's a need to release let go and you know moving moving forward order directions everything you do every new endeavor means leaving something behind this can be a place a person or even a state of mind you can't move forward without leaving some of what you are behind you this is growth it is important to acknowledge the leaving of things as you begin your journey. When you leave your house to go on a journey, be it a sh long or short journey, it is a normal thing to tidy up a bit before going. Putting things in their proper places, making sure that the plants are watered and the dishes are washed is a way of ordering your mind and preparing it to go on to the next step. When you journey psychologically spiritually and metaphysically you will also do well to leave your thoughts in order before you depart on that first step just as you would not venture into unknown territory without a map you would be wise to ask for directions before you leave in a reading this may mean taking another card to guide you on the first steps well we have another card we have the lady of unicorns but yeah this leaving energy is going to be this moving forward is coming like literally, it says moving forward. And literally, you got the moving forward card and the 10 of air, which is all about moving forward. I mean, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty, pretty obvious here. Okay, here we go. The late, oh, that's the wrong one. The Lady of Unicorns, belief, magical connection, and guardianship with the Lady of Unicorns. Oh, God, I love that. It's just his it's just so beautiful okay <clears throat> excuse me okay this is the lady of belief and longing the unicorn symbol of purity grace and love is under her guardianship she is the keeper of our longing to connect with magical beings she holds our need to believe and she cherishes it belief is such an important part of living a true and magical life mm -hmm. <laughs> belief can help us overcome depression and despair oh man it can lead us towards a brighter future. Give, give her your longings and she will keep them in care for you. Come to her when you need to be reminded of the importance of what you believe in. And she will restore that belief to you. Oh my God, this is making me emotional. Man, these connections are so intense with the fate. Oh my God. Okay, so let me collect here. Because I felt it in a wave like a tsunami. It's still washing over me. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. That was really intense. <laughs> Whew, that was really intense. I want to hold my crystal. 
Oh, shit. Okay, so. This is coming through to say that, okay, God. Oh. This is really intense. So, this is coming through to say, let me burn some sage here. Because I'm feeling this energy so intensely. <sighs> Sorry, I don't mean to be dramatic. It's just, it is what it is. You know, it just is what it is. Um, so what I'm feeling with this and what she was showing me here as like she rode in with her unicorn and everything that came in behind her were the archangels, the angels, the dragons, um, uh, the mermaids, just like everybody coming in, the things, the, this, like the Tinkerbell <laughs> type, even, um, everybody coming through right now, the gnomes, um, of course, Mother Gaia, like, is just like on the, in the background and pushing everybody towards you. Like I said from the top. <sighs> this energy is so strong with archangels and guardians. Like you got the angels and um, angels and spirit guides card. The energy with these uh, these cards are so intense to uh, for belief. You need. It's like nobody can make you believe. I I can sit here and talk all day about my own connections with all of this. Um, and hopefully that helps, but, but belief in knowing that there are these beings that will guide you to feel and be better, to connect, to, to open up to this, to healing that needs to take place, that will help you sort out what needs to be sorted out. And the reason I got so emotional is because there's so much of it um, wanting to lead you away from from the, the past. And like I said, you may just, it may be so buried that you're just like, does this even apply to me? Yeah, it does apply to you. It does apply to you because there is a next level that you're not going to get to until this stuff is cleaned up. Truly, it is so important for you to leave this energy behind you know, they, it has its place and we all get wounded. We all go through hurts. We all have to go through these trials of being disappointed and let down. I feel this energy so strongly here that it's just despair and this, the let down, the abandonment, um, and how that gets in the way of love coming in, of abundance coming in. Fear is it, fear of any more pain or hurt or anything of putting your faith in something and not having it or having feeling the bottom and just poof, there you go is kind of like this feeling. And it doesn't have to be that way. Remember, the pook was is here to say you you went through things to confuse you energetically to hold you back and there's always purpose to that because you've experienced things that that moving forward will help you in the in the in in your on your journey it's like you'll be able to read that sign when it's super teeny tiny in the distance and go i see you sign i don't need you to smack me in the face or pass me by and have to do a u-turn to read that again because <laughs> i see that and it doesn't mean that it's from a place of fear but it's a place from a place of clarity there is a big difference there a big difference there as my third eye is super activating and making me all emotional and business um so okay so yes and if she's saying and if it's even it could just very well be this like you have an affinity to unicorns and that's your magical being and but you're like but they're not real i like them but they're not real trust me unicorns are real they don't just because they don't run around on our streets in our woods for us to see 
doesn't mean they're not in a dimension that is very real and that energy is very real remember belief is a huge part of this and i'm being pointed again to that meditation uh, body love and meet your guardian angel like that will crack this open for you truly i promise <laughs> okay and let's get into the last bit here um towards the end i'm feeling let's get into the angels of abundance wow this is these these readings are so intense with gaia coming in we want this card and that card let's just see these two to begin with clean energy food let me show you that so healing healing takes place when we take care of our body so so if you start really getting the feels for fruits, vegetables, just high vibrational, lots of water, um, high vi vibrational intake would be great for you to start healing on a molecular level to really open yourself up. So try to refrain from as much. If you still eat meat, try to refrain from meat as much as possible because you're just bringing in that sad energy and, and that's just not helping. <laughs> um, but anyway, here we go. When you fuel your, your body with a healthful organic diet, you increase your energy levels and ability to focus. This automatically leads to more efficiency, better ideas, and a higher vibration, which attracts golden opportunities and beneficial relationships on both both sides of the veil and successful funding your idea is divinely guided and supported by the same infinite wisdom god of god that gave you the idea do not allow money concern to concerns to prevent you from turning it into reality crowdfunding partnerships and other investments are available to help you and also okay so this is very specifically talking about healing and partnerships with healing and having this apprehension about possibly like spending money on healing that it's like oh what if i need that money for something else or someone else or a, or an emergency in the future or something goes wrong or i lose my job or any of that crazy shit that we get our heads all involved with with being in fear of not having enough money to take care of ourselves this is a message coming through right now i'm telling you to release that um, those visions and projections and fear and give yourself what you need like whatever it is that you're being guided to that is that is going to be like this is what you need to to heal um and it needs your investment when you invest your money into your health and wellness and healing by paying for a service or paying for a crystal or paying for a retreat or paying for um uh organic food whatever that leads to your healing that you're like oh it's too much oh i shouldn't spend that oh maybe you know what i mean you start talking yourself out of it because of money that is that is again negative energy holding you back we have things within us that actually don't want us to heal oh <gasps> what yes so many people are miserable in pain with chronic conditions or chronic depression, chronic, chronic trauma, trauma, PSD, stuff like this. And they may say on the surface, I don't want to feel this way. I don't want to be in pain. I don't want to have this experience. I want this to be gone. But at the same time, they refuse to do stuff to change it. They make excuses. They, um, they put stuff off. They come, they come up with anything because it's change. Change is unknown. It's like, okay, well, I know what this is. Like on a subconscious level, on an energetic level, you're, you're, the, the, and there's even attachments that can be within us, literally like parasitic, energetic parasites. And I'm going to do a video on this and really get into it in the near future. Um, aside from the one that I did on, on empaths, I'm going to just do a general, I mean, on um, narcissists, I'm going to do a general one. But nevertheless we will we'll have energy within our body in all different places that 
holds on to negative energy and gets used to that negative energy. And on some level, we'll talk ourselves out of growing, of, evol of evolving, of healing, because that means the unknown. The We don't know what that is. At least I know what this is. I know what my life is and what this is now. And, and if I step into the unknown, it's scary and maybe I shouldn't do that. We'll come up with excuses and one of the best, easiest excuses that people go to is money. Money being the factor for you not healing and or putting it off and procrastinating and all of that. And I say where there's a will to heal, there will be a way. And what I'm hearing here is, is if you find a... a like, let's say it's me. And let's say you, you, you decide like, oh my God, the Evolve Now pro, pro, program is exactly what I need to do. Um, and, but it's, it's not, you know, it's $1,600, but you get like nine hours of healing, two sessions and a month of working with me. It's actually a super cheap deal if you break down the hourly. I do that because I want it to I I want it to be accessible while being fair on my part for all the energy that I put into working with you on that level. So not everybody has that money just sitting in the bank and ready to to go. Um but again, like where you decide you want something to happen and something on that level of healing, I guarantee you that the resources will come. Or if you do have that money, but you're like, oh, I don't want to spend it. I don't want to use it. Oh, maybe for somebody else, maybe this, maybe that. Please stop that <laughs> because when you take take that and invest it in yourself as soon as like I tell people as soon as you make the decision I'm going to do that you're in a level of healing as soon as you book it and pay for it and schedule it you're on a whole the healing begins everything in the universe starts taking place to make that happen so um and support you in that so you're never gonna feel um regret for healing yourself and using money that um that's for that's your that's for you that's an investment in you and your healing so you can create more abundance after that love abundance monetary monetary abundance just abundance in everything so this is saying you know if you if you like you could borrow money you could take out a loan you can um you can ask your you know your friends and family to help you especially you know it's like you can whatever that it is okay i'm not gonna get too far into it but this is just saying you have the resources don't act like you don't and and even and if it's not you know me and the evolve now program i have other options and and whatever whatever you're guided to whatever you're like oh i want to do that but as soon as you catch you yourself in the butt and it's about money take a moment here and consider what i'm saying that that is a block to healing that just isn't very very automatic thing to happen either you allow it to sit and be your station and be the case or you move past that and you break through that wall okay now i'm being guided to get to the dragon fate oracle and we'll round out your reading here holy moly these are so intense so intense these readings <laughs> okay Wow, and then we're getting into the dragons, and dragons are always like, find the center of your heart and get right in there. So we'll see what we get here with the dragon fae. Um, my very first Lucy Cavendish oracle, and such a big part of my process and awakening oh apollo i love you this is apollo you are a peaceful being oh i love him so much see that yin and yang see his wings there is apollo apollo i think he's card number okay four four 
Okay, you are a peaceful being. When this um, Apollo Law speaks, when this card is drawn forth, a sense of peace and new depths of serenity become truths for you. Simply breathe deeply and learn that your practical nature can sorry your peaceful nature can become a daily source of delight and courage of strength and beauty peace is like a quiet glade within a grove a sacred grove to which you can go and belong take strength and draw nourishment from this place within you and be sure to visit it daily practice arts of peace within your life be strong be free be blessed and be at peace when you come into this place daily all around you will benefit do not mistake or confuse peace for inaction being a peaceful activist is one of the most dynamic and powerful choices a being can make in this world now and ever when all around you is in drama and all within you feels in turmoil go to that place and know the truth of your being is peace is serenity is blessed is free oh yes oh my gosh and um oh man okay and divinatory meanings you are a peaceful being bringing more peace into your life you may be wishing for more peace and for conflict on a personal and global scale to be done with please do not put your energy into fighting war instead create peaceful moments wherever possible this does not mean that you need to be weak or passive but instead choose to draw incredible strength and do not waver from your choice to bring more peace in Know that your conversations about peace and beliefs are bringing about change. People may have also told you lies about peaceful ways of meaning to lack, meaning a lack of strength. This is not so. Choose to be stronger, more peaceful, and watch harmony and joy flower in your life. And working with Apollo. Invite peace into your life by choosing to work with people and beings whose beliefs are aligned with yours and who are held with integrity. Understand that the conflict around you is the result of people attempting to control each other's hearts and minds and futures. Mm. Apollo teaches us that the here sorry Apollo teaches us that the here and now when tended with love creates exciting and peaceful outcomes for us all oh boy so I guess at the end here what you're being told is that well number one you are a peaceful being so peace is your is your neutral is your center not hurt pain conflict confusion fogginess any of that stuff that is not what we are meant to be any of us that is not our natural state of being on a soul based level or even a human based level and how do we know this look at a kid look at a baby and see them they're they're only in turmoil because the humans around them are in turmoil right so humans are meant to be peaceful loving caring kind creative beings and that gets twisted but we can take ourselves back to that when we decide to choose peace for ourselves and we decide to heal our energy within and without ourselves and to connect to those who will help us and take us there and um, guide us to those places so this these messages are very very specific and whoopsie and um in theme throughout this whole thing um that is all for your cards let me show you apollo again so call on apollo call on the unicorns call on the fae call on the mermaids call on the archangels call on gaia most importantly to help you to bring in the energy for those who can help you if you're so guided to explore what i have to offer to read about energy connections cord cutting empaths um and check out the services and what i have to offer uh, i would um highly suggest that because you are being guided to healing it is time 
and Gaia is um, definitely wanting to be there with you in whichever way that you uh, resonate with. So check out my website, thehealingbutterfly.org or wherever else that you're guided to, to go. That's the most important thing, but especially definitely reach out if I can help you. And with that said, dear one, have a great rest of your May and happy Mother's Day and infinite love and blessings until next time. Bye for now. Hey there, lovely soul, and welcome to your reading. You picked the Icosahedron 20 sides. So here we go with our readings here, or her messages here, I should say. And again, uh, just to reiterate, these are messages directly from our mother Gaia and uh, our guides and guardians um, that work with her. Oh, there's a card face down that work. Oh, there's another card face down. Uh, and she is coming through really strongly today with very just... These messages have been so multi-layered and thematic again and again. So I'm so excited for this one, this third reading. So welcome those of you who pick this third reading. Uh, and again, if you're guided to more than just one of these, if you're really feeling more than one of these uh, geometric shapes, I suggest that you watch both readings um, because they are definitely meant um for you okay you wouldn't be feeling that if you d if that wasn't the case so I, I these have tended to be longer than i i thought they were gonna be, <laughs> of course but uh oh, very interesting i want to turn this over see what we got here oh very interesting uh, i love it um and so anyway, so watch them in chunks if you can't watch them all the way through. And Okay. And just checking to see what the placement was there with that one. Um So messages directly from Gaia and these have been really intense um very she just it's she's coming well okay there we go she's coming through these readings the way she comes through to me in my healings which is really strongly usually when I'm doing readings it's a real mix but here in the beginning and she'll pop in and mean she's really using um uh employing i should say not using really employing the help and work of the fairies um lately like i said in my intro so um they're coming through so strongly so strongly on this mother's day and happy mother's day Okay, and whenever you happen to watch this, this is a timeless reading. So this is not just for Mother's Day or just for May 2021. Whenever you're guided to this, uh, these messages for, uh, through the geometric shapes uh, from Gaia, messages from Gaia is, you know, so this could be like, you know, in December and it's relevant to you now. Okay, without further ado, let's get going. We got the hero. Okay. Well, there we go. The hero, intuition. And I love this card. She has a cat. She has the spider. She has an owl. She has uh, a crystal. Um, I can't tell what what that is but she's in a circle so it's very very like infinite and nature and cyclical here with this 22 card intuition then we have the 10 of air 
not the first time I'm seeing this card in these reads. Same with the Five of Water. Next, we have the Lovers. With the, well, it's not called the lovers. I'm calling it the lovers. It's the two of cups. I should be more specific. I see lovers here. I see this. Oh, I love this card. Let's get lost in this energy. It's beautiful. Divine feminine, divine masculine energy. And lastly, we have the eight of earth here. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. Eight of Earth here. So much to take in. Her staff, the dragon on the staff, all the crystals, all the greenery, her third eye, the horns, uh, the adornments she has on her, the connection with also, I'm feeling, um, it's interesting because I'm feeling water energy here as well, but she is the Eight of Earth. Whoopsie. The only problem with these cards is that they're so shiny that they pick up the light like big time. Okay, let me tap in here and see what we get. Working with these six cards, the hero, intuition, the Ten of Air, the Five of Cups, the Two of Cups, and the Eight of Earth. So, this hero energy, that would normally be like the Prince of Wands, okay? This, is, this tarot is very different, and as you know, intuition is not usually in a major arcana, in the major arcana of tarot, but in this tarot, the Dreams of Gaia tarot, intuition is a card and um this is i just love this card so much uh because of all the animals here you know they're the owl the cat the spider i mean these are in i can relate to this card so much because those are three of my like power animals um like the three of the big ones actually uh but and they're all very very intuitive obviously so being psychic being a shaman being a healer all of that you know obviously our psych psychic abilities and intuition and stuff is like at the forefront so i'm really feeling that you are somebody that's uh a helper, a giver, uh, the hero, somebody that that is good at being intuitive, knowing what is needed, being, um, I'm hearing, being there for others, sometimes to your detriment because you feel so much. I'm definitely speaking to an empath here uh that and you're realizing uh dear one that you're there's imbalance in that drive to take care of of people that drive to be the hero the drive to be seen as the hero too i mean i get it you know it's like i can help you let me help you and i'll be your hero kind of thing and and i get that but not everybody wants to be saved or can be saved by you because they're you know maybe not ready or things get in the way and even though you know you like it's like you know the right recipe for people they don't always want that and they can resent sometimes when you you know try to help them without really I don't know. It, it's a tough, it's a tough line to walk. I, I, like I said, I get it. Um, but being this like super empath that you are, this natural healer that you are, I feel like if you took my empath quiz that you would score pretty high or maybe you already have. <laughs> um, and that it's been, it could be very uh, draining and challenging and difficult on your emotional and physical self that you know you it's like I see things so clearly and it's like if it could just 
And not in, not in a controlling or like narcissistic way, but it's like you know what people need and it's just tough because they don't always want what they need. <laughs> they want what they want and um, sometimes that's results in a way that is you know unrealistic and you know if you are somebody who is you know an actual healer or a guide in some way uh, other than that you know that it's time to change this energy and to heal this energy because it is and has brought you down over time. You may even be somebody who's dealt with being chronically sick. That could still be your situation. Um, and you're ready to move on. You're ready to, to take care of yourself. You're ready to... Uh, love yourself ma balance the divine feminine and the divine masculine within you you know you're out of balance and need to get into balance uh in d different and various ways and i would consider that being what you eat your sleep um how you when you rest do you listen to your body you know things like this um And the need to connect with nature, um, with Gaia, with the outdoors, and really making that a priority. Um, it has been a lot easier to keep yourself away from nature just because the pandemic and the weather being cold or whatever. You're not feeling so great, but... Oh, excuse me. Oh. I'm not tired, I don't think. I just tend to, at least in this moment, I, I tend to yawn when I start picking up a lot of a lot of psychic information and my ears start to get plugged and that's all happening right now and I'm starting to tingle really hard and even my tongue is tingling. That's really interesting. Um, <laughs> this doesn't usually happen. My tongue is tingling. Uh, so, like, my whole head is just like... You know, there's your third eye, there's your crown chakra. So when you start to pick up really intense psychic energies, it definitely affects your head first. Uh, so anyway, um, this card with the eight of earth really picking up this, the need to reconnect, I'm hearing, reconnect with Gaia, reconnect with your own um earthly energy to ground i'm hearing the need to ground but i'm going to dive into the book here for this uh eight of earth there we go 172 growth manifestation accomplishment success abundance wealth appreciation okay success wealth and love do you know do what you love. Love what you do. Make plans for the future. A time of abundance ahead. Yay. Confidence in the future outcome. Do not rest on your laurels. Money does not buy happiness. Lose the, lose the lack mentality. Okay. The eight of earth symbolizes success, wealth, and love. The manifestation of a positive attitude. Doing what you love and loving what you do. Sorry. This is a very optimistic card, one that suggests a time of abundance, fruitfulness, and good harvest ahead, a peaceful, happy home, career confidence, the respect of your peers. What more could you ask for? All the seeds born of, of past planting are growing well, and you could be confident that the outcome you need will manifest. This can also be a good time to think about taking the next big leap rather than resting on your laurels. You have it within you to go further and reach greater heights if you do so desi desire, especially if you remain committed to doing everything in your best or to your best ability. The Eight of Earth signifies a time to to look to acknowledge and celebrate your successes and perhaps to start making new plans for the future as well okay 
And the reverse is, do you find yourself looking life through jaded, cynical eyes? Like being, um, like succumbing to like feelings of failure or lack or being in fear that you don't have enough, that kind of thing. And the message that I was getting as I was reading that, as I was tapping in there and yawning really big as all these energies are coming through. Oh my gosh. Um, like big time. Is that kind of in order to get this energy coming in for you like as strongly as it's meant to because you see it's in this last position so that that and it's also it's just flat out i heard like what's coming in for you is greater is the need for greater connectedness with yourself like i said before this two of cups i called it the lovers i'll get there in a second but this two of cups this two or two of water i should say two of water uh is also definitely about love and deeper passionate soul type connections uh so you with your own soul and you with another and just flat out abundance this is just a lot of love and abundance and creativity and uh receiving and just all of that good stuff it's like what you've all this energy and work and love you put in to whatever it is that you do and however you do it because it feels like it's a lot like there's a lot here that you do so maybe it could be you take care of a lot of people you're the head of the household or you're you know a one person show in your business and you just do everything and you're always working because it's constantly coming to you to work really hard with this intuition card and it's just coming from all of all of gaia and the energies and the cosmos and the web of life and this is i can really relate to this <laughs> it's like big time because that's it's like this constant you know and and sometimes we're just we're in the field and we're pulling out the the, the dead stuff and we're putting in new soil and we're we're churning over the earth and we're watering and we're taking care of it we're planting the seeds and we're we take care of it and, and it takes time for it to build a root system and start to take hold in the ground and things to start to you know the stronger a the stronger the root system the stronger the tree or the plant right so uh you know an oak is doesn't isn't easy to grow to root be, and to to do all that because it is such a strong strong big tree but and it takes time it's not going to be a really really fast you know thing and so that's what i'm seeing here too is like kind of two things happening here it's like the need to release negative energy that's come in and stayed in like it's so interesting how you can see the same card in different ways depending on the reading but in this reading here with those sun rays coming through the water at this beautiful mermaid little bear little bear I have a bully of a cat um and she's one of the tiniest ones she bullies the like boy cats that are three times her size it's really funny she's scary she scares everybody um <laughs> i can't help but find that amusing um annoying sometimes but amusing okay anyway so those rays coming through at her and hitting her um in this event in this reading is telling me that these are cords that are still connected to you from um sources that need to be cut so this has been a theme with these readings on some level in some way that we need to um cut cords do healing on ourselves with you know go to a professional um somebody like yours truly who works on all levels of body mind soul spirit connections and healing to um to help but you can take care of your 
own cords. I don't do cord cutting for people. I've had people ask me that, um, but I don't. Um, that is for, it's a very personal thing. However, I do offer you a free ebook, The Importance of Cord Cutting, which is energy cord. So if this concept is new to you, please check out my ebook on my website, thehealingbutterfly.org. Uh, and listen to and do the self-healing channeled guided astral meditations to take you through uh, how to cut cords and um, who to cut cords with and how that all works so you can take care of this and and I'm hearing here you <laughs> you'll know you'll know pretty quickly who you need to cut cords with or reset cords that's another thing um, resetting cords so uh this card when i said when i said that you know going to the healing temple it's literally like she's in front of the the temple here that is trippy i'd never really picked up on this but take a look at this card and let me see so she, it's like she's standing in front of some place very um mystical and and magical and that's kind of like what the healing temple looks like Oh man, my ears are plugging. Feels like I'm in the in the healing temple. Uh, so, wow, is that? Let's get into the. I'm feeling the crystal oracle here. Let's get into that. But yeah, I definitely the need to follow your guidance to cut cords. Go to, go to the healing temple. What do we got here? <coughs> Excuse me awesome okay so we got i'll stop here for now we got transformation uh with sheen obsidian and the snake oh gosh love it card number 31 so take a look at that tap in with that transformation that's exactly what needs to happen it needs to start with you cutting cords and then doing possibly a lot more deeper work with a shaman like yours truly for helping you to deeply connect deeply clear deeply heal because you are somebody who is so wowza <laughs> so wowza with the um with the with energy and you and in this day and age people have not done these types of healings before the closest people are getting to them are doing ayahuasca so if you've done ayahuasca or you've worked with a legit naturally connected shaman then possibly you've done this work other than that i can guarantee you that you have not so please look into it the next card here is initiation it is and it is and it would be and to think of it as an initiation to do this type of work sacred site with phenocyte and card number 16 initiation uh spirit saying it is time to move transformation initiation time to move in a new direction i'm gonna i'm gonna drop this dice in just a second i was told truth truth and integrity with summer and turquoise card number 32 this card keeps coming up so <laughs> And Gaia's like, well, that's because if we live from a place of truth, we're naturally going to be led into where we need to be. So this has been a theme literally in every single reading. And next teacher with Wolf and Shattered Kite. <coughs> I need a I need drink because my, <coughs> my throat's starting to get affected because this stuff is dra draining from my third eye as it's doing this business. So teacher with wolf and shut uka I think I'm saying that. Whoa, I think I'm saying that right. Teacher. So yeah, you are definitely it's like both both things here. You are somebody who teaches and you also need to be led and taught and guided because you're you're you've been very, you know, you're very uh naturally gifted in just knowing what people need, knowing uh uh 
how to help people, heal them, connect to them. Uh, but you also need to find somebody that you can really like feel feel is like I call myself the real deal feel that real deal type of energy that they're really connected that they're really um really tapped in with divine knowledge so so you so they can help you to hone those skills even better for yourself because of what you are so you need so the clearer you are in energy the better you're going to be and picking up information and doing what you love to do being the hero being somebody who helps people in the different ways that you do that because i feel like it is multiple ways like you're not getting you didn't get the the a healer card you got the teacher and the hero card so you could be uh, maybe you're somebody like a maybe you do own a business and to everybody you're their hero because you're so good at what you do and everybody loves to work with you and you do teach people and that sort of thing um so it could be that you're a yoga instructor or you run a retreat or you run an animal sanctuary oh i'm definitely feeling that or you have a lot of animals or just animal rescue on some level like that too. I could definitely feel that because we have a lot. Uh, so. I'm hearing one more here. Oh, I love it. Freedom with the eagle. Another animal with blue barite. Uh, card number 12 with freedom so there's gonna be a whole new sense of freedom for you with this like increased abundance and love and connection on a soul based level that's definitely coming through for you uh and i feel this in partnerships also definitely in love so congratulations on that but i feel like this is a little far out this is not going to be like right away Let's get into the fairy oracle here. Um, it's a little far out because there is work to be done on, on both sides, I'm hearing. And uh, so it's like don't focus on on this like love connection of the future for with you and anybody else focus on the soul connection with you and your own soul and your <coughs> and your guides and guardians, especially Gaia and your uh your guardian angel so with that said aside from the cord cutting please check out the body love and meet your guardian angel um wow that is a lot of cards uh we're not gonna get into all of that um I'm just going to take this top one and I'm going to shuffle again is what I'm being told. So let me do that because it was like 12 cards or something like that. We're not and I wasn't really feeling any of them specifically besides this top card, which is the um, he of the fiery sword, which is really interesting. That's um, divine masculine energy. Big time, big time divine masculine energy. Okay, here we go. Oh, my head just started pounding when I said that. We have two fours here. So we have a, we have a set, I'm hearing. We have a match. So we have the four, um, the four card, he of the fiery sword. And then we have, uh, the, the undressing of a salad with uh, card number 31. The undressing of a salad. I love it. And you see all those, those pearls everybody is holding? That is a lot of energy being held. Like, like literal like pearls of wisdom. And it's so awesome in these decks that 
there's very specific cards that have the fae holding these pearls and that always means that there's just so much more there that's like really um tapping in with that intuition energy so let me grab the book oh i'm hearing first i'm two roll the roll our octahedron i'm sorry icosahedron i always confuse those two so let's see what we get we got a two <laughs> so i'm hearing again a pair to um, a match this side that side we have the two of cups with those lovers we got the two the one and the two together big time manifestation energies with that with that too uh so and four is two twos i'm hearing so let's get into <sighs> these readings have been so intense i gotta tell you it's like everyone is like running a, ma a marathon okay he of the fiery thor he of the fiery sword and i wrote down michael michael archangel michael energy big time with this card fyi the active principle spiritual will justice and protection when the song comes into any of of the manifest worlds this world or fairy or another it first encounters two principles two sometimes called yin and yang or masculine and feminine or great god and great goddess he of the fiery sword is the primary manifestation of the yang principle action will movement force fire we see him in many ways each one an aspect of his total being all of the great gods and protectors are aspects of this power the fiery sword is the archetype of all magical and mundane swords and written upon the blade are the words draw me not without cause nor return me without honor a member of the oracle group notes his fiery sword illuminates truth and dispels not truth we call we can call upon the master of the fiery sword when we have difficult things to do when we need to take action that is going to require much of us both in will and in compassion another of the oracle group reminds us he will do what is need to be done with love when looking at this card my name my neighbor saw it not as a sword but as a feather of light he saw it as a symbol of the ability to fly to rise above things an oracle oracle group members saw it as someone reaching up ascending surrounded by multiple reflections and filled with light and power let me show it to you again <sighs> It's absolutely beautiful with the light of this card so how whatever you pick up from this energy however you happen to resonate with it uh, to understand this card more fully please read the comments on she of the crotch which is the feminine power they are two halves of the same whole and start a reading the presence of the fiery swords map swords master in a reading can indicate that there is or there is a need for a clear and focused will and a determination to carry through on decisions even if much effort is required or he can tell us that m such will and strength is present in regard to the issues under consideration we need to consider how he is expressing expressing his will and strength and how that expression may be enhanced and improved it is this singer's energy that enables us to burst the bonds of an outgrown way of being and move on to the next level he indicates that this is a time to take action based on clear spiritual will being super guided by spirit by your soul his 
presence indicates great strength and a great potential for good. It also reminds us that if we call upon him, he will receive assist we will receive assistance. The presence of this card in a reading radiates strength and willpower to the cards around it. And reverse, like all the singers, this card does, card does not have a reverse meaning as such because he of the fiery sword is present in full measure throughout the universe on all levels. Reversal here speaks of an archetypal energy blocked or unaccepted by the quotient querent, which would be you, or another involved in the issue. Look at the cards around it to see what may be causing this. When he of the fiery sword is reversed, the question we need to ask ourselves is how may I free strength and will in my life to allow the virtual force of flow through? <sighs> okay. So what, what I was hearing with this was just to really have, really call, okay, let me tap in. Okay, it's like call beyond, call upon the strength within you that you have um, because you are a very, very strong person. Um, but like, it's like multiply it, multiply it, multiply it and feel it on a soul base level because our soul is like infinitely stronger than like our human aspect. And you know, the, it's like this, 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 energy that we can really tap into and bring into and into our physical body and energy and spirit but we need to like really channel that in because he says what is needed to be done what ha what this is like the thing that we need to do what is talked about here go back and listen to that this is about needing to do things needing to do something and what that thing is is to work on clearing and healing out your energy so you can truly be like the super power house that you are. Okay, let's go to card number, oh, right to it. I love it when that happens. I've been doing that more and more lately. It's quite fun. Um, the undressing of a salad. Okay. And again, I encourage you to look these up online. You're always going to find pictures. Just go to your search engine and type in Brian Froud, uh, the fairy oracle, card 31, undressing of a salad or something to that effect. And you should be able to see multiple options there. Okay, balance, avoiding extremes, achieving the impossible, being impossible. Brian called this painting the dressing of a salad, but in an earlier stage of the Good Fairies, Bad Fairies manuscript, manuscript, it was the undressing of a salad. I've combined the names because they show us important aspects of the card. I've come. Oh, sorry, I just read that. The undressing of a salad requires a good balance. Disparate elements must must blend blend into a tasty whole the undressing of a salad requires no, no no off 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 please off oh my god uh sorry the undressing of a salad requires Ugh, she just totally threw me off here the undressing of salad requires a good balance. Disparate elements must blend into a tasty whole. The undressing of a salad requires truly remarkable adjointness. At first, one might think it impossible, but Adritio, who, whom we see busily balancing magical balls, is the fairy of doing impossible things. He is also the fairy of being impossible and the fairy of avoiding extremes. Sounds impossible? Well, of course it is. Both Andrito and Sally, crouched above him, are intently focused on balancing things, and the large gnome in the center finds this very amusing. <laughs> He looks in two directions at once, seeing the impossibility of keeping things that are in constant motion and balance at all times, like the jug 
juggling act of life. Of course we fall out of balance. Of course we occasionally drop the ball. Sometimes we drop the ball or a bird flies by and snatches it from us and we just have to invent another one. Sometimes this seems an impossible as impossible as undressing a salad. There are times when we have to turn bad luck into good and that isn't always easy especially if someone else seems determined to turn good luck into bad everything is integrating and disintegrating at the same time confusion is rife but we still try to create order and put things into balance the whole universe is hurtling through time at an astonishing rate and it is very difficult to keep balance on a rapidly moving object especially as it appears to lurch unpredictably unpredictably from time to time Sooner or later, Andrito or Sally or both will drop their balls. And sulky looking, the sulky looking fellow on the left is clearly waiting to snatch one or two so that he can play too. Or maybe just so that Andrito and Sally cannot. My money is on Andrito though. He is smart enough to realize that old balls wear out and new ones must be brought into play. He is ready to deal with this. The balance changes constantly, but it is still balance. <coughs> okay, and starter reading. Things are in motion and the outcome is impossible to predict. A cool head is required to deal with this as is a readiness to jump in whatever direction seems appropriate exercise cool judgment while staying ready for the unpredictable sudden changes of fortune may appear good or bad but they are in flux and can be re-channeled if necessary develop poise stay calm you can come out of a winner here but it is likely to take concentrated effort use power with delicacy and discretion and reversed imbalance occurs confusion happens lovely balls fall on the floor and we discover that they are uncooked eggs sleight of hand may be happening and things that appear to be are so or not and vice versa Misdirection may be prevalent. Attempts at over control may be contributing to the problem. Someone may be attempting unethical or unkind manipulations. However, it is worth remembering that out of chaos, we can sometimes create miracles. After all, unity card one created the whole universe that way. Okay. Um, it's true yes <laughs> out of chaos becomes miracles and that is how things began through through chaos and 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 things that weren't settled i guess you could say and so what's interesting here is that these cards together it's like something's going on you're gonna need strength you're going to need to be in balance and it's about getting into balance and and using that strength to get into balance because we're not in balance here and you know it we need to get into an energetic balance it's the only way that you're going to be able to level up and that is what the the he of the fiery source said i get and i'm not going to look for it because i was like oh there's that leveling up it's like it's time to level up but in order to level up we need to release and the undressing of a salad talks about the need to be in balance but also to understand that that balancing is a constant act of shifting and that it's so important to give ourselves the understanding of like like don't beat yourself up for not being in balance because especially given what and who you are to your for you know just what you just energetically and how you 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 are that person it's easy to get out of balance. I was out of balance for 40 years because I'm a psychic, physical empath and medical medium and all that, you know, all that business. And I was always, like my energy was so out of balance. I was chronically, desperately ill with fibromyalgia until my guides came for me and said, yo, we gotta fix this. You could also be 
somebody who pushed who is also in a physical distress type of situation even though you're a hero that you deal with physical issues already like a chronic condition like something that's just born of energy sticking in the body and everybody has a different button we have like we have similarities you know a lot of we don't have a different disease or illness for every single person so they come they kind of cluster there's only so many things a human body can can twist itself into and and have symptoms of but we we all process through that negative energy in a certain way and so for some people it's a illness like um let's say you know cancer or kidneys or thyroid or um some type of rheumatoid problem um i had fibromyalgia so it was just like so many things it's like layers and layers and layers and it's an energy thing and when we take care of that when we when we see it and read it for what it is and understand it like it's not our fault we didn't know how to take care of ourselves in this on this level um we're just not taught that in this world um yet but we will be and we're starting now there is that to to be had trust me i went from being extraordinarily sick no energy and pain massive pain all the time on 10 daily medications um to try to maintain some type of you know space where i wasn't in pain all the time or whatever and i had five specialists for all the different wrong things going on with me and it was it was an energetic issue and my body just couldn't manage and hold all this energy that was going on anyway once we do all that freedom um in a way that is like so otherworldly like not even like how is this possible kind of thing is what you would be like wondering and so uh again if 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 you resonate with this if you feel drawn to check out what i can do for you please do so but first and foremost really consider doing that cord cutting um and uh at least reading the book and getting that started for yourself and this is like like if you were to work with me on my evolve now program it's required to do this before we do that to get you as ready as possible that's how important it is so please look into that and uh what else oh yeah the body love and meet with your guardian angel the messenger card number 16 whoa the messenger i'm hearing that's it and that was from the heart of fairy oracle got into that heart of fairy oracle again by brian froud that's the back of the fairy oracle so the messenger card number 16 again right to it confusion mischief gossip the messenger flits between the fairy courts delivering messages and whispering gossip and news to all he can be a force of good intentions or mischief there is nothing he likes more than a complication where one isn't necessary forever ready to tell you what someone else thinks especially about you he causes trouble that all always he causes trouble but always with the excuse i just thought you should know or i'm just trying to be helpful while making sure that whatever it is he tells you causes dismay and confusion the messenger loves a good laugh at someone else's expense if he turns up in your reading make sure you verify what people are telling you especially about how someone else feels or about any aspect of your relationship gossip can be irresistible but the hurt it causes is so easily is not so easily mended be aware of the messenger in your life and take what he tells you with more than a grain of salt so (sighs) 
tapping in here with this. So there, I'm feeling like there's, it's interesting because it's like a couple of things here. Like they're, like the messenger is coming through like more like, more like a lot of different people coming at you with their energy to confuse you to can not to confuse you but to to disrupt your energy field like it's a constant barrage of other people and their energy kind of thing um not necessarily so much one person uh or yeah that sort of thing and maybe and not necessarily about gossip either just just is about life stuff but it feels like you know being the go-to person for everybody to unload and as this teacher empath healer boss you know mentor person whoever it is that you are head of household type person you could or could be all those things um that there is a lot of energy and this like confusion type energy coming at you and people just kind of I'm hearing using you up and you kind of letting them um, because you feel obligated to be there for other people and it's really hard for you to say no. Like, I'm clocked out. I'm taking care of me. I'm going to do go do this for myself. No, I can't do that. No, I won't be there. No, you can't count on me. It's just not your way. So um, it's like you almost need to get more selfish here with yourself, your energy, your time, your, like, are you giving of yourself everything that you need to be everything that you can actually be it's like your potential is so great here not only in your for yourself individually but as a partner to somebody a divine a connection um that is that really doesn't have room i'm hearing where's the room for that holy crap see these are really intense <laughs> like mother gaia doesn't mess around with her messages like when you work directly with her like i said it's not something we normally do like she's there but she's not like the person and today with it being mother's day we are getting like and she's very direct very loving but very direct and what i just heard was is there room for the type of divine union partnership with with a person when there's all this other stuff going on and it's almost like nobody said like tick like ticket sales are done there's no more seats to be had it's just it just keeps on coming and it's there's just like kind of it's just a lot or it's several people and a lot with those several people um and i'm also hearing like what can you give away to other people to take care of or if you have that option to just like really sit there and go what am i doing how much am i putting out what am i getting back who's what's what's where where remember the balance we need to see about getting your back into balance here because it's just like nope it's all going out and what's left for you what's left for anybody that's going to be like actually for you who who is there for you and is there room for this person gaia says no at least not right now and not until you clear out this energy so it also could be it's like a it's both it's it's who's there now and who's been there in the past and it's leaving you literally underwater like you know there's not much you know you're just kind of like sometimes brain dead like and you forget to do stuff for yourself and your your stuff falls your stuff doesn't get done your bills don't get paid when they're supposed to sometimes not because it's like you don't have the money it's just like there's too much freaking going on 
and it's like you're scheduling your stuff doing your thing taking care of yourself it's like everything is out 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 i want to take care of this person i want to be the hero i want to do this i want to do that and and it's like then me then me then me well when is you is like what guy is saying i'm not seeing this and i love that you take care of everybody around you you emulate that that motherly protective person so well by the way but it's like too much it's like she's like that's not in balance it's like there has to be a time where you look at, at things within your body within your world and you go what's happening here and so many of us empaths and healers, light workers type people have had or dealt with that sort of thing. I have. And I learned and I learned how to um, have boundaries and not, you know, change my my plans that I'm doing for for myself or my work or whatever because somebody swoops in to distract me with chaos of this or that or the other thing. It's like depending on the situation really depends on how I'm going to react to it because there's a bigger picture here there's there's me and what I need to do and my work to put out into the world yes it's very important but it's also that me time for me and nobody else is going to come in and and organize that prioritize that and put boundaries on that and be in control of it other than me because I can't get mad at me or at anybody else, if I allow that to happen, I, I get, it's my problem. If I say yes, and then I don't do my thing, or if I let somebody take hours and hours and hours of my time when only a couple hours was scheduled, that's also something I need to work on. Like I tend to go long in my appointments because I feel like the people need it. Like my clients need that. And then I'm like, okay, now I didn't do this. I didn't do this because I, it would set up a two hour appointment it was a four hour appointment. Like, okay like and and it's not that i don't enjoy it but it's like that's not in balance it's not what the deal was and you know i'm just being honest like you know we all deal with that so i get this like this i really relate to this reading actually um and so the message here is and specifically from gaia is if there's too much going on and you are not you know in control of your energy your time your your connections going out and what's all connected to you and who who feels like they just have a permanent seat front row to get your attention all the time whenever they need it um and you the thought of you saying no or wait or later is just unbelievable for even you to think much less them to think then it's definitely out of balance here and and things need to change um okay and lastly we're gonna get into oh no not lastly uh where oh they're under here aren't they yeah angels of abundance we're gonna get And then we're going to do um, our last oracle after the Angels of Abundance. And remember that the Chu, the Chu theme, the that that theme here, that being in balance, and also working with Gaia, you going into nature, making a priority to retreat into nature. And we the one we didn't get the retreat card, but it's like that that will help you, like like leaving your <laughs> second time we got that card too um there we go so our two cards we're gonna get for the angels of abundance uh anyway i'm just hearing the need to take time to just leave the environment like log out of the computer turn off put your phone on mute leave the house go someplace else with it's a park the ocean side, the beach, a drive through the mountains by yourself, sitting on a rock, whatever. You need to be by yourself. Look at, she's only with animals. There's nobody else with her in this intuition card, right? That is necessary. That is necessary. Okay, first card here, clean energy food. When you fuel your body with a helpful organic diet, you increase your energy levels and ability to focus. This automatically leads to more efficiency, better ideas, and a higher vibration, which attracts golden opportunities and beneficial relationships. Clean energy food. So please consider 
fruits, vegetables, organic, whatever it is, not processed. Um, try to stay away from from animal and animal products, meat that includes chicken and fish, and because of the energy that that animals carry in them when they've been killed for consumption it's not good for anybody but it's really not good for us empaths and maybe you already are a vegan or a vegetarian or you're starting to really consider it because you're really feeling the energy of, of of that and how heavy that makes you when you don't eat it and then when you do eat it so please consider that more and more and that will also help you clear your field so you can get better guidance be guided in a way that will help you towards your path and next card take a divinely guided chance here all positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories as you leave behind what that which is comfortable and familiar but no longer appropriate for you you make room for new and more meaningful opportunities people experiences all of that stuff so that also could be a part of this too is what i'm hearing separating from those people who are literally just the takers and if there are people who you can't really separate from like their family you can't just be like oh, i'm not going to talk to that person anymore just start to pull it back just create more boundaries um i'm so i'm hearing that and and this take a divinely guided chance listen to your listen to your guidance you're going in new directions you're to and this is about like Like let faith lead you into the best course of action to take care of yourself and your and your energy for healing, um, for grounding, for connecting, for all of these things. It feels like you've been asking, like, what do I do? Who do I go to? What what needs to happen? Like if you're if you've been asking answer asking those questions, here are your answers, is basically what I'm hearing. Okay, and we're gonna get into the Hidden Worlds Oracle. Oh, we haven't gotten here for these readings yet. Okay, awesome. One of my favorites is the Hidden Worlds. So let's see what we get here with the Hidden Worlds. That was weird. Yes, that one. <laughs> okay, healing the earth, card number 20, another two. Wow. So also connecting, divinely connecting with your guides and guardians, with Mother Gaia. She's coming through big time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> is that book okay and it's there Oy. okay here we go card number 20 right to it again love humility respect we the humans have left the care of the planet to the great and unseen spirits all about us some it is true have taken up the burden created by the many and we rage and race towards an abyss telling ourselves that what matters is only today but tomorrow matters for those yet to be born and for the wisdom within you that can be remembered by the children of the future yet the forests have been murdered the waters polluted the gifts of the earth brought to the surface and used for playthings it is time to heal and to remember for the great ones can do so much but the true healing must take place in our hearts and move to our actions earth earth healing can be felt 
on those special days when the gates open and we can feel the flood of energies pour down like today we can help weave those energies into the people by demonstrating what matters most we can choose to help our mother the earth to be of service and to have a humble attitude and expression of energy towards her we can walk gently and openly and know we must help her. We can pick up the fallen bird, plant a tree, speak our truth, and live like this life has and this planet matters. It is temporary, this life, but it matters what we do with it. And now you are being asked to be of service through expressing love, humility, respect for the earth in your actions. Let this great goddess nurturing the earth nurture you too. This path will take you away from the disposable, the ungrateful, the careless, and move you into a deeper, truer expression of your soul. Oh my god, it's so good. Oh, I love this card. Illumination. I play my part in caring for the earth. I support the great ones in their healing work and embrace being a child of this earth. Here, here. Let's take another look at this beautiful card. Look at, how, look at how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. So what I heard here was, as I was reading this, was that uh, you are definitely somebody who is a light worker somebody who is uh one who feels very responsible for helping others and helping mother gaia you do have a connection with her already um but it's it's not on the level that it actually could be and um it can be much much stronger and and she is like look you you you're able to pick up on the vibrations of nature and and animals and the elements in a way that most people can't like you really feel it deeply when when oil gets spilled when forests get cut down when when um rivers get blocked when you know people are hunting when you know animals are slaughtered like all this kind of stuff um you we some of us have a no i the way i just saw it was some of us have this extra component for really being able to connect with gaia and nature and because of that we we connect with others as well because we're all nat we're all natural and of nature we're all animals and and Gaia's babies as she calls us and we all those of us that are like that feel such a pull to help on every level but if we don't help ourselves first we're not good to anybody else and we all know that and and that is part of this too this is Part, this is a big time part of this re reading for you time to to if you it's like if you really want to help then pull back what you do be realistic about time and energy and and your physicality and your mentality and your spirituality and how much time it takes to rise up into like a really high station requires solitude requires limited connections with others requires time to heal to connect to clear energy to get deep with Gaia and your guides and guardians um so you are definitely being guided in this direction um to heal to connect to uh have this initiation this remember this transformation is going to take place it's just a question of when are you going to strap on the soldier boots and make this transformation happen because a whole other level of of beingness is waiting for you to make some very specific 
decisions about what your next steps are going to be and how you're going to manage your time and energy and and how you're going to prioritize your own time for meditation for healing for working with 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 somebody possibly um for scheduling things for taking a stand in your in your own life and not feeling so out of control because I think people get like in a boat and go down a river and feel like they don't have any paddles and it's just this is the way it has to be I have to have all these people and commitments and and all whatever that it is and I do this and I do this and I take it this person this person it's been weeks since I blah 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 you know put on a new pair of underwear like kind of thing and you're like what that's insane and you know I'm not saying that literally but it's like let's dial it back and make this like you are the center of your universe not to be in a selfish way but nobody else is going to come in and and be the captain of your ship except for all these other little captains that take whatever piece that they can or that you allow that to happen and it's not to say that it's done maliciously on the most part but it's still happening and you're allowing it is basically the way that it is and for this energy to come in on a soul base level with yourself on a on a balance level with your let me try to get rid of that with your energy um remember balance and for this actual union to come in this is the the two of cups deep love deep intimacy deep passion deep soul connection um and whether that is i mean it's mostly i'm feeling romantic but it could be a really like it, this could also be pointing you to um are we out of focus is that Okay, there we go. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> this could also point to a partnership with a teacher with this because this teacher card is right under this two of cups. So aside from that, you know, pointing to at some point in the future, once you get yourself in order and clear that you'll have this the, the capacity to have this beautiful union that this two of cups is right above the three the 30 teacher so it's like two three so there's sequence sequence there with getting help from a teacher um to to help guide you um in how things need to go so that's you know also a, a thing here so aside from you your soul you and another person it's you know allowing this partnership to come and and know that gaia will will you know guide the way because you're very connected to her and all of this abundance needs to come in and she's like it's not going to anybody else and it's silly to hold on to it and make it all wait when it's ready to come in now and you know that that's the truth and that there's just things that need to change in your world by your intent and decision make space make time use the money that you have to take care of yourself because know that that's just going to build you up so much more so then you can do your hero light work healing connection whatever it is that you're meant to do from such a higher vantage point energetically physically mentally spiritually wowza okay there <laughs> We are done here. Those of you who picked this amazing icosahedron, remember the number two came up. The number two is really, really prominent in this in this reading. Um, also, the number four, which reduces down to twos. We had twenty-two, two, two, a uh, <laughs> couple of fours. So a lot of that is about manifestation your manifestation powers and to pay attention to synchronicities to numbers to messages coming through because it's literally like you're being herded in a way and just pay attention and don't be in resistance to this energy coming through to really push you through um, into a new place and being again don't forget 
cutting energy cords, reading about that ebook. Really, if you're not aware of the level of empath that you are, please check out my video, um, number one video on my YouTube for empaths, also the ebook that you can read for that as well. And that is it, my lovely. Thank you so much for being here and getting these messages. Happy Mother's Day every single day of the year. And whenever you watch this, infinite love and blessings. Bye for now. Hey there, lovely. So you picked the trapezohedron. That is that 10 faced, really cool kind of spinning top. Uh, shape here so I am being guided to roll this right off the top here and we got a number eight check it out number eight so uh, of course that infinity number that coming in so if, so if the number eight speaks to you uh, definitely speaks to me, obviously. Um, that's kind of my number. But that is what we got to start off here. So let's see how that ties into the rest of the reading. Again, welcome. Welcome Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day every single day. We want to welcome in the energy of Mother Gaia. She's been coming in and through, like I said, in the last reading I just did, like she comes through on in my healings this is all my healings she's she's a present and uh or the the central focal point or the or where it's coming from um but anyhow so have whoa here's two cards that, oh three cards three cards <laughs> With the three of fire, the two of air in reverse. We'll see if it stays that way. The nine of earth. We'll see if it stays that way. Oh, two more, three more. Masculine, feminine. And eight of air. And... Sorry, nine of air and eight of of air. First, I thought it was I was like eight of air and eight of air. I'm like that doesn't work. <laughs> What's happening? Um, no, we have eight of air is our last position. Nine of air comes in right before that. Very interesting here. So let me just tap in with these two cards that came through in reverse and see where we're at here now i'm being told to turn them both over actually okay so <laughs> and on the flip we have the love card Oop, let me see if i can get this better for us So there's that. I'm not always guided to take a look there or to make it part of the part of a reading, but right now I was. So we have the three of I got this I got this down in my last reading. There we go. The three of fire. The two of uh air. The nine of earth, masculine and feminine, the uh, 11 card of the, so this would be like the page or the princess of wands is where that position is. This is a very different kind of deck. The nine of air, so we have two nines here with nine of earth and nine of air. And then we have the eight of air. Try to get this, there we go. So, let's tap in here and see what we get. And then we have this love on the, on the flip.
Sorry, don't mind my silence. Just picking up here. So, we're real. Okay, so. <laughs> There's just a lot coming through here, and it's kind of disjointed in a way. And that could be the clue here, because I'm just like trying to make sense of this. Um, energy, the energies here. Let me move some stuff here so my cards can stay where I want them to. There we go. Okay. feels like you are on a mission to feel whole again <laughs> that you you're a very generous person and um there's been a lot of giving on your side and Things have come out. They're like out of balance. You're in this quest to make things, put things into balance again. This two of air. Uh, and like moving to center is what I'm hearing. Moving to center. And... Moving to center and receiving your, your like golden nuggets of, of information, of inspiration to balance out this, this divine feminine and masculine energies, uh, I'm really, I'm really, really, really feeling this nine of air. So I'm going to grab the book and get into the nine of air. <sighs> was I there? I was there. <laughs> Went the wrong way. I'm getting really much better at picking my pages. Um... I was on the other, so it starts on one or two twelve, and I was on two fourteen and fifteen, and I went ahead instead of going back, but I was right there. Definitely getting better at that. Okay, so for this nine of air, self awareness, universal consciousness, understanding, insight, vision, imagination, fantasy, creativity, open to possibility. Possibilities are infinite. Know thyself, and know the universe. Uh, what dwells within you dwells within nature. Belief cr creates all that exists was first imagined. Fantasy is a birthplace of reality. You are born to create. Imagine your, your fears away. So the nine of air represents the imagination and our connection to the universal consciousness or universal mind. It signifies the importance of knowing thyself. For in truly knowing thyself, one will... Oh. Excuse me. I tend to start yawning when I start to pick up on stuff. So I'm sure you heard me that say that. If you're around here, I tend to say that just in case you're new. But I do say that because it's true. Uh, no, in truly knowing thyself, one will know both the universe and the power of the void. Ask yourself, what if the universe we dwell within is actually the mind of another being? What if the universe is, in reality, a god mind and we, and we the creation of another being's imagination? What if, within our minds, there exists universes within universes where creatures that we dream of and imagine dwell in the same way we do here upon Earth? And within their minds are more universes. Like fractals where the same pattern repeats and creates, our minds contain a universe and within that universe are creatures and beings who also have universes within their minds the universe is which in which we dwell is one of billions existing within the mind that is yet another universe 
That's why it's called the multiverse. That's really my favorite way to talk about it because just saying universe is just so one dimensional. <laughs> it's just nothing. <laughs> so flat. The universe, but it's the multiverse because it's multiple on on top of themselves. Now ponder for a moment, what if we looked within and discovered that within the realm of our minds, we create new worlds and realities with our belief. We choose to believe in something and a new world that mirrors that belief is born. We stop believing in something and that world either evolves with our beliefs or ceases to be completely. Universes overlap, are born, die, forever bound to the life and beliefs of the God mind that created them. What if billions of lives were dependent upon our belief for their very existence would it not be wise to believe with understanding and knowledge would that not create a universe that is a little more constant and conduct conducive to life okay so this is a great card i love it i love it let's get deep real quick here people <laughs> so uh here we go. The nine of earth represents the importance of knowing your mind, understanding the beliefs and thought, thoughts that limit and restrict you and freeing your imagination. Now it is time to embrace innovation and creation. It is time to step into the realms of the unknown and imagine to enter the void where your imagination is most powerful and bring what you find there to life. You are born of a universal consciousness. You are capable of greatness, but all too often we may have been punished for seeking it nonetheless it is time to let go of any unconscious bias against creativity and embrace it as the expression of human power and ingenuity that it is you are as pow powerful as your mind allows you to be you are as powerful as your mind allows you to be probably the most important sentence in this whole entire book is that right there short little sentence but oh it's so true you are as creative as your mind allows you to be don't be afraid to embrace your beautiful imagination the void in which it reside is resides is the womb that gives birth to the universe that is teeming with life and possibilities to imagine and create is to make divine magic you were born of a creative universal consciousness. You were born to create. Yes, that's exact. I say that all the time. We, we were created to create. Period. That's what we're meant to do. And our fears oftentimes limit our creation, limit our imagination, limit the, 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 the length in which we will allow ourselves to expand and evolve. Again, you're as powerful as your mind allows you to be. And your mind is governed by your energy. And and so to get into balance, and I'm seeing this here, to get into balance is so important because this divine masculine and feminine energy, this, this um, nine of wands and this 11 of fire are are this earth and, and fire energy the nine of earth and the uh 11 of fire or the masculine and the feminine are very explicitly coming through to say you need to be creating so something has possibly held you back there or you've limited yourself on what you're creating you stayed within a certain realm of creation and and maybe you've kind of dabbled out of it for shiggles or for a hobby or something like that or not taking it seriously um or just been out of balance too much to do that to do the creative things that, that you really like enjoy doing or you haven't done for a really long time like it's really important to connect back with the inner child i'm feeling here uh to give that to you so you can get in balance the the um the the, the yes abs absolutely absolutely oh my goodness yes it's all coming through for me now it took a little bit because it was but 
it's like the, it's like the way that I'm seeing this card here is the the balance is the inner child with the um with your now aspect. So I have a meditation. It's uh, healing the inner child and integrating with the inner child. It's soup. It's it's one of my most favorite ones. It is so powerful and so healing that it will shift your energy just that alone just that alone um cord cutting is always a great idea but if anything i'm seeing this inner child thing way more than than even cord cutting which is different because cord cutting has come through in every single uh every single reading so far really strongly so it'll probably come through some more but even for even before that it's like before i'm hearing before you even get to cord cutting work on this um also the body love one the as i take out rejuvenation plant and green tourmaline card number 23 as i take out rejuvenation i'm here i i'm i get a flash of that one uh meditation that i did oh, okay we definitely want that one. Oh, and that one and that one <laughs> there's a lot here but there you go okay so wow 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 oh my god this is great this is great okay so i did a meditation for body love and connecting with your guardian angel and this will all those two meditations please check them out. My meditations are channeled guided astral meditations. I know it's a mouthful, but that describes what they are. I don't think of them. I don't design them. I'm just told we're going to get into a meditation and it's completely channeled through me. My number one, um, if you don't know this already, if you do, sorry to repeat it, but my the number one force in everything I do with my healings, with my with my guidance, with my uh, meditations, most importantly, is Gaia. Mother Gaia is the one who is like the 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 host of the party, if you will, and I'm just setting up the space is kind of the way that I see it. So first off here, we got going within. So very important, going within, also meditation, freedom. Freedom is, is one of my, another one of my very favorite cards here because of the nature of that energy. Freedom with that eagle um soaring into like whoop going up like soaring with this going within rejuvenation again plant with green torm oh my god green tourmaline is so amazing oh my gosh i don't have any because it's kind of rare and i but i'm definitely gonna get some next unconditional love with mother mary and diamond with 33 I have a hard time doing it with that hand. I don't know what my problem is. Next, we have, and I'll do this in order of, yeah, I'll do this in order of which I saw them. So it was unconditional. So unconditional love came out next. Then I flipped it over, and we got um, inner wisdom with Mother Gaia. So we have two big time mother energies. Mother Gaia herself. And I just got done telling you how Mother Gaia is in the center of everything I do. And if you listen to and do and practice my meditations, you will see that. If you go to my website and see my 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 most, my signature healing is the Evolve Now program. And she is at the at the beginning big time uh, healing that I do at the beginning of that of that series of of healings or two phases of healings i should say um oh no that's not the card that came out next the second the card that i saw on the flip was actually the divine feminine <laughs> then it was mother gaia <laughs> then it was truth and integrity which this card has come out in every single reading and lastly uh, self mastery. So big time, big, big, big time mother energy really implore and pl 
imploring you to work on that inner child. Like this card right here is, is showing me that like, come find me. I'm the inner child. I need you to reconnect with me because the inner child is all about that soul spark, passion, creative nature. Like children are just so energetic with creativity and and tapping into that soul space they don't even know they're doing it they're so pure that's just what they do but we tend to lose that and i'm not feeling like it's been totally lost here but that definitely it's been out of balance because of the nature of um life and other things and feeling like you have to do these other things has been a real kind of focus so uh but it's time to change that it's time to get in balance it's time to go within reconnect with that inner child for rejuvenation to have that unconditional love that mother mary's diamond is coming through and really diamonds are single refractive so when light hits it it doesn't split it stays at that one beam of light so it's like she's pointing that light to your inner child with unconditional love energy saying it's up to you now and i feel this really intense energy i can't ignore it it's been going on for like five minutes and I've been like not even ignoring it, but it's so intense. I'm like, I can't. Um, really intense. Uh, tightness in my heart chakra here, tapping into this energy um, because we need, there needs to be this love to go to your inner child. And, um, and you, it's your responsibility now to take care of your inner child, to go into a healing mode, to go and meet with your inner child. And then the integration part in, in the meditation I facilitated that I channeled, it's literally, it's like going and finding your inner child and then bringing them into your body now. And you feel it. It is so intense. It's so amazing and so beautiful. I wish everybody in the world could do it because it's necessary. <laughs> it's necessary for us to really come into our creational beingness and to do what we're meant to do on the level we're meant to do it. That is the truth. That is our authenticity. That is where we can stand in integrity. That is what the soul is about. The soul is about that. And self-mastery, look at that. Self-mastery coming in with um, that spider and topaz. So we have to topaz, turquoise, gothite, um with inner wisdom and mother gaia and then we have black moonstone with moon energy for divine feminine so such a, intense feminine mothering nurturing energies here for, and for he, healing going within connecting um uh rejuvenation with plant really wanting this is like all very very deep 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 connection with nature and gaia we have divine feminine look at this three in a row here unconditional love with mother mary divine feminine and then um inner wisdom with uh mother gaia wow that's really mind blowing. <laughs> that is amazing. And it's like this, it's like this energy. It's like, give this to yourself. It's like you giving to you would be you taking care of, of starting off with your inner child. So you can really get into that, um, the heart of fairy here really uh really get into that giving 
and receiving exchange of energy with yourself so you can get back into balance with your divine nature with that divine masculine and feminine energies and you're definitely somebody who's meant to show that balance in the world you have a real that's like not everybody can get to that like zero point of balance with feminine and masculine energies. It's it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, actually. A lot of healing needs to take place before that. So I feel that you have gone through some deep healing. You have gone kind of through the fire. Um, oh, the queen of hearth and home. <laughs> Holy shit talk about mother motherly energy card number seven wow and oh my god <laughs> wow <sighs> the child card number 24 yeah, so no joke here with that child energy. And then this third card does not have a an actual it's not it's not in the book. It's just a picture to take in. So whatever comes through for you right now. And again, there's balance there. She's balancing this crystal or something on her foot. And again, there's that, oh, that wasn't in this reading, but whenever we see them, the, the Fae holding like balls or pearls or acorns or something, it's like we have, you have something to receive, um, some, golden nuggets, pearls of wisdom, that sort of thing. So, and we have this unicorn energy um, here, this fairy with the unicorn horn and I'm hearing her determination to not let everything around her see all the busyness around her. It's like I'm hearing the determination to not let anything around her uh, shake her up and 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 move her out of this meditative state of balance. Wow. And then we have Queen of Hearth and Home and then the child. I can't, I can't with this right now. <laughs> it's just sometimes the cards are just too freaking much for me to take. I just like. <laughs> okay, welcome, courtesy, graciousness with the queen of hearth and home. She holds the mask of living flame in her hand this is the eternal hearth fire in ancient times people would carry an ember from the hearth they were leaving to their new dwelling place they carried this link from their past to their future the queen of hearth and home carries with her the ability to make a home in the moment in the now wherever she is she passes this ability on to you it is important to be at home in any situation to create a home when you invite people into your space whether at a table in a restaurant a desk at work a seat next to you on a bus or a plane or in your own home the ability to make someone feel welcome when entering your space is a gift indeed brian says that he always stands up when signing books for people because he feels that he is inviting them into his home and he he wouldn't sit while people were standing in his presence it is his way of creating a home wherever he is and wherever he interacts with people i'm sorry whenever he interacts with people when this card appears remember that you are in the presence of a great queen she gives you the ability to be gracious and create a home wherever you are in any relationship oh my god that makes me so emotional <sighs> These have been so intense. I'm like, holy shit. Oh, man. So, what I was hearing with that is, and we'll get to the child here in a second, but what I was hearing with that 
is that the more in balance you are with your inner child and your divine feminine which you have a great capacity more than most to do and to feel this mother energy so you can have that balance and be able to take care of your inner child takes a great amount of divine feminine energy to support you and to help you you know have healed and cleared and gone through some muck is what i'm seeing and feeling here and um when you have that balance within yourself you do feel at home every everywhere you are you may not always feel 100 percent comfortable everywhere you are but no matter what there's such a balance and a grounding in that energy with this queen of hearth and home so we have such intense feminine energies here this is like the fourth one coming out with the child so let's get to the child shall we oh my gosh card number 20 why can't i i've been going directly to them let me try let me try that because i wasn't really paying attention okay let's see 24 the child pure joy sense of wonder without judgment love this card so very much oh man look at this very child she embodies pure delight pure joy of being alive to the world around her children spend time in the realm of fairy without realizing that is it is separate it is a separate reality and for them perhaps it isn't our son toby used to see fairies all the time we just took it for granted that he could and encouraged the interaction a lot has been written about getting in touch with your inner child but it isn't always as easy as it seems to experience something without judgment is almost impossible for an adult. We have too much to compare it with, but we must try to do just that. When you pick the child, take a few m minutes to really look at it. Look at the creature in the background as well. That creature is looking at the little spark of light just like the fairy child is. They share that experience. The spark is reflected in their eyes and echoed in the lights at the tips of the child's wings. I'll show you again. Okay. It's kind of, an, it's like difficult because it's like, if I can't see it, it's hard to see. <laughs> it's hard to see if it's in focus, but if my face is in the picture, it focuses on me. So, <laughs> paradox, uh, quandary. <laughs> okay. The spark is reflected in their eyes and echoed in the lights at the tips of the child wi child's wings. In the distance, you can see another little light. Is it getting closer or leading you further in? What happens if you follow it? The child can fly. Imagine flying with her. Allow the light and see where it leads you. If the child is part of a larger spread, then try to imagine seeing the situation you are in as a child would see it. Don't analyze, just observe and see what happens. So like I said, big time with the inner child here. Seeing from that point of view is so very important. And, oh, we're not in focus at all. How interesting. <laughs> um weird so oh man my my chest is getting is loosening up now it feels like that was just such it's like real shit here man <laughs> we're not joking around this is real real deal information energies coming through here such intense 
divine feminine, motherly, nurturing energies. I, it's just kind of overwhelming. I'm doing everything I can not to just start bawling right now. <laughs> because it's like... And remember, as my eyes are being taken all the way back to our love, love, oh man, our love card on the bottom here, that's what I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling so much love for you, your inner child, your story has been really intense and beautiful and magical and you just need to take a beat and reconnect with your inner child so you can like get this newfound like whoa that's what was missing because once you do that and get into this new place of being. It is like we, we heard about like imagination and the universes within the universes within the universes. It's like you have this ability to kind of like go into all these amazing places that many people don't. This is, this is a, this is, wow. <laughs> um, and with that really feel universal love divine love love from your guides and guardians love from uh from gaia love from mother father god love from like so much love like it's ridiculous the amount of love that you can um tap into that you can use for your um for your work here on your soul mission to create and bring about emotion into the world like art creates emotion and people express through that it's like uh and to be able to get into balance and getting into balance isn't always look at this eight of swords there's he he's a little bloody with that knife pointing down that's what needs to get fixed so we can get back into balance so you can literally be this energy with the both knives pointing up kind of thing if that makes sense like right now this is where you're at but it's not going to take a whole lot of effort really is what I'm hearing it really isn't gonna take you a whole lot of effort to integrate with that inner child and to really start to feel this rejuvenated um feeling and to allow for all of this amazingness to come in like it's really really wow let's let's get into um I'm feeling the angels of abundance so let's go there right off the bat <sighs> Whoa, jeez, man. These freaking readings have been so intense. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, have courage to ask for help and accept help. Bountiful nature block out distractions and visualize abundance in all forms so we're going to actually start there god gave you such great spiritual power that everything you visualize eventually becomes reality hold a steady vision of that which is beautiful healthful positive and filled with blessings and that is what you will experience exactly like i said you know not everybody has this ability or gets themselves to this place but you have um you have this this manifestation ability this ability to tap into love and the abundance matrix of gaia to work with gaia on a level that helps you create that it's just like you're probably one of those people it's like i don't know how i did it it just came to be it just wrote itself i just don't i'm like in a med meditative state when i'm painting or drawing or writing or or baking or sewing or whatever it is that you're do like you're doing whatever the creational energy is um, that it's like, and so this abundance in all forms is just the ability to tap into your, into that inner child, into that soul, that like zero point soul 
and pull from that because that what when you're when you can tap in with your soul and what you're meant to do things come so easily because there isn't you know blocks and you're not like an ego and you're not like coming from a place of fear and and holding back and all this stuff so again this is just about like fine-tuning that block out distractions did I show you that card? I'm sorry. Sometimes I get like right into the business. So there's that. Then we have block out distractions. And your life purpose and other priorities need your undivided attention. So it's time for you to take charge of your schedule and working environment by turning off electronics and avoiding anyone or anything that distracts you from what's important. Yep, kind of got this in the last read too, but this is really specific. You already know what these distractions are and you have the power and res to responsibly block them out. So to really like make time for your reconnection with your inner child. So do that meditation, Can those two meditations, um, with the, the uh, guardian angel one and the hidden uh, inner child one. Um, so make those a priority to do sooner than later. Please, 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 please. And especially if you could do them within the Stargate, the Stargate is through the 15th. So if you could get to that um, in the Stargate, that would really accelerate these energies because we have all these light codes for raising our vibration in this time period more than other time periods of the month and we have the new moon so if you could do it on or by if you could do these by the new moon or on the new moon or a day removed from the new moon anytime within this next 9 10 11 and 12 days like this the 9th the 10th the 11th and the 12th would be ideal to pump out these two meditations for yourself block out the distractions like make it a priority and then from that point forward still continue to see what happens after those self-healing practices and what comes through for you because I feel you'll get a charge to create a charge to like um uh continue on a project to get back into writing drawing painting whatever that it is that you're meant to do um making videos uh, whatever it is because there's stuff that's just like right it's like right behind the dam and the dam is going to open and the stuff is going to all all that energy is going to blow through and then bountiful nature uh spending time in nature helps you shift into a higher vibration and reminds you of god's infinite abundance go outside and enjoy a walk or hike with your pet meditate beneath the tree garden or sit under the stars or do some other activity to connect with the limitless vastness so again um gaia coming in saying you know and look at this little baby oh my god she's so adorable watering the garden again a child coming through here Take your inner child outside and play like a child. Or better yet, if you know children, play with children. If you have, if you have um, nieces, nephews, children of your own, um, you know, kind of step up. Be like, I'm going to be a kid today. Let's pretend I'm a kid today and just have fun with it. Just all in. Just jump in the puddle and who gives a shit how dirty or muddy it may be. Like that's child energy. That's what I'm seeing. Like adults don't typically do that. They don't want to jump in a in a in a put in a muddy puddle and you know deal with the aftermath of that but a kid doesn't give a shit they are jumping in that puddle and that's what i'm seeing here is take that inner child outside even it, like if it's by yourself great because you definitely like, blackout distraction and bountiful nature is like two in the same like go outside by yourself in nature too like to seriously connect with with gaia but also like do a play date with yourself and children if you if you know children don't be that creepy person at the park though <laughs> have courage to ask for and accept help so you see blessings coming and going receiving and giving there 
Asking for help is a sign of strength, as is accepting it as it is offered to you by, oh, sorry, very often when you ask God for help, prayers are answered through the other people. Very true. Be sure to accept this assistance as well as give it to others as you are guided. So... You're being asked to accept this, um, accept what is given to you through this process and know that, sorry for the, that's out of focus there. So, um, to accept this guidance coming through, to accept the help that may be coming to you, to accept the, the other energy or ask for it or, or call up a friend and go, I'm on a mission to reconnect with my inner child or call up a friend and, and have them, you know, somebody that you know that could use this, this type of healing with the inner child you know there could be somebody that comes to mind or this this, this i'm getting that like call up a girlfriend or one of your guy friends and go look you know this is where i'm at right now and i'm gonna do this and i want to know if you want to do this with me and talk about it after and and see what happens and then maybe plan a play date and let's go play together like kids that sounds awesome. And so that's coming through. And you will be guided by Gaia. Again, getting emotional because that's just, tr that's definitely something to do here. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Whew, yeah. Where are we going now? I'm feeling the fairy, the fairy oracle here. The wild wisdom of the fairy there so we had a little stoppage in the recording we didn't miss anything because i hadn't gotten any of the cards yet but we're gonna get card or one card or maybe two but we're at least going for one so let's see what we get here with the wild wisdom of the fairy oracle the fairies we've really been tapping into lately as I said in the beginning, um, in the intro and with what's all, you know, going on with the energies, <laughs> what is happening? I'm feeling this card right here. What is this? Oh, the littlest fairy. Oh, again, the littlest fairy. We did have the littlest fairy make an appearance in our full moon uh, meditation, the oracle part of the meditation uh, for the full moon. If you have not done that yet, please, please do that. Uh, if I didn't mention it before, um, maybe that's why this card is coming out to remind us right now that this is that this is um, something very important to do. The littlest fairy. So if you've already done that meditation if, um, and watched that video, then you are familiar with the little, littlest fairy coming through again. Appreciate the beauty and value of the exquisite and small. So let's get into this with the littlest fairy. Let me see if I can work my magic here. Oh, no, not that time. <laughs> 20, I got to 27. I needed 20. Okay. The littlest fairy. Little things matter. Seeds, subatomic particles, fairy rings, and precious things are all often very, very small. And they often are overlooked, go unnoticed, or are judged ordinary due to their lack of size. But such small things have power, magic, and significance far beyond their size. They are gifts from the world of the fairies. And as such, the more you express your gratitude and appreciation for them, the more fairy blessings and magic can enter your life. And those little things are often invisible. So when you draw this card in a reading, be sure to take a look around, both with your physical eyes and with your spirit eye. Have a delicate feel with your fairy fingers. Find what has been given to you and then give thanks for the little things in your life. The tiny things. Make an offering today for the fairies, a thimble full of milk and honey, and create a fairy bower. 
Clear a small section of the garden and let it be wild and free, for in that small area they feel at home more than amiss the order. This fairy here is protecting her sacred toadstool, a section of the fairy ring that is as important as any other. So today, be on the alert for small signs coming to you from the fairy. Perhaps a fairy ring has sprung up near your home or in your garden. Protect it and leave an offering near it. Fairies are oftentimes tiny, but they are very strong. They stop roadworks, destroying sacred rings. They whisper in the ears of earth guardians and wildlife warriors, asking them to protect trees and animals. They bring tiny and often invisible. Uh, being tiny and often invisible to others are un underestimated and often misunderstood they are powerful beings and though some are tiny and appear as little more than a flicker of light from the corner of your eye or a sense that something just flew around you they are strong wild and assisting us greatly so today notice what is overlooked do Oh, do something small and know that through your life it itself may, and though your life itself may seem small at times, it is a powerful, magical one. And you too can bring many blessings to both the planet and the soul of nature. The butterfly lives for a short time span, a day. Perfect poems can be small. There are perfect minutes of music, just as there are day-long operas. Sometimes there is something exquisite in scaling down what we do and creating something precious and shining in getting closer. Set, see what can be reduced in your life and know that it will shine the brighter for its seeming reduction. Yeah. And divinatory meanings. Modesty, a delicate, deliciously small sense of scale, miniatures, natural beauties that may only last a few minutes. Dew on the grass, a rainbow in a crystal, a brief and gentle breeze on a warm summer's day, a reflection on water, a delicious strawberry and a flower in bloom, a light moving on the periphery of your vision, signifying fairy contact. All these things are precious. Today, make an offering and give thanks for a small treasure within your life. Be generous in your appreciation. Keep things small and beautiful. Something needs to be in miniature to be at the right size. Do not criticize something, a gentle tendril of new plant pushing through soil for not being large in size yet. Break down a task into its smaller components and take baby steps. Give thanks for each small step along the way. Uh, knowing that over the magic of time, small things grow. Know that some things are better for being small. They are not meant to become big. They are tiny and they are treasures. Being pushed to make something bigger, louder, and more noticeable. Small is the way to go for now. Look closer at the detail. Understand the power of gratitude in terms of growth. Know your life is in some way small and very precious because of this. And reverse meanings, underestimating the significance of a small start, overlooking details, being overwhelmed by the big picture and not understanding its components, wanting things to be bigger, grander, more noticeable, feeling resentment for being overlooked, wondering if anyone notices the thousand small things that you do that create a life, overlooking the small things other stuff. Oh my gosh. Excuse me. Small things another does. Walking over or through treasures like fairy rings and destroying something precious. Insensitive insensitivity to the small things. Okay. So I think it's kind of obvious to say when we're thinking about some small things, aside from the fairy, I'm going to go straight to the heart of the matter, back to the child, the little one, the small one, the small one within us is what I was hearing here. Aside from the messages here of the, of the small in nature, the small in our lives, reduce, 
reducing things down. I was getting this, you know, with, uh, which one was it? Um, this one. Block out distractions was, you know, like reducing stuff, um, not being distracted, you know, <clears throat> we have going within. So with the littlest fairy here, we are being um, guided to appreciate all the small things and see through the eyes of how, you know how little kids love, they love big things too, but little kids love little things. And to see through the eyes of a child and instead of, and, and how the, when we, when, when I read the child, how it talked about how, you know, children have that like wonderment, that wow, that like, oh, this, that the, the sparkly, the, the, the different Different, you know, because they're so young that they're just experiencing things in this lifetime. So everything is just this wow. And the tiniest of things, because they're little, they're closer to the ground. They have a certain perspective that adults don't. So they notice things that that adults don't, and they see things and they play in that realm, and they can pick up on the little things that are in between or on the other side of the veil so much easier than adults can. And so um, the littlest fairy is coming through to say, uh, I, she's coming through to say, I'm with you. I'm, I'm helping you. I'm helping heal you and guide you. So uh, she's, those little fairies are big time in that full moon meditation. Again, like I said, so you're really being guided to check that out. <coughs> like big time. I know I'm throwing a lot of meditations at you, but this is what I'm guided to do to help you get your energy in order and, and, and uh, decide what your next steps are once you integrate with the inner child and work on that for a couple beats here. Um, really take that seriously because all this mother energy, all this nurturing energy that we have here with the divine feminine, with Gaia, um, with uh, Mother Mary, uh, is just like, and the queen of hearth and home, Oh, is really, really intense. And uh, that's what you're being guided to do. So, so many amazing, amazing uh, <laughs> messages coming through for you. Just take yourself here and see this like, and, and wanting to integrate blend these two sides together with that two of air um, because there's like there's a block there um, so two of air is also two of swords so it's like this in so it can also mean like cooperation participation because we're ending kind of like the fighting but it's also seen as a block like in your way that there's something like um causing like this and that this like two things that are separate we want them to be integrated uh with like that again that divine feminine and masculine energy and you're somebody who can really balance that out so if you got this reading dear one you're really guided tap in with that inner child the creative the passionate wonderment type energy um and let your soul think flow through that place of being because that's your sweet spot that is your zero point in the infinity so your rejuvenation and feeling that that unconditional love we had we have love here twice remember how i told you we feel love so much i felt love so much it was like really overwhelming i was like feeling all this pressure in my chest i was like oh my gosh and and love energy can actually feel especially if we get big surges of it, it can feel actually painful because the body is just receiving all this energy and the chest cavity can only like hold so much. So you have to like, um, like let that flow through the body and out your energetic wings. And um, if you have not done that yet and worked with your energetic wings with your heart chakra, I would definitely suggest that as well. It's another meditation on my podcast. I believe that's episode 93 or 94. So definitely check that out as well because there's so much love. Like 
We have unconditional love with uh, Mother Mary. And then we got the love card. I mean, just to like really drive it home how much love is for you and your inner child and your mission, your soul mission. Like what you're meant to do here is next level. You need to give the time and space to yourself to integrate with your inner child, create from that point, clear out more energies. Once you get into that like next pool of energy, you will feel a push to go even deeper and and really, really heal um, on a deep level. And again, I offer that type of healing as a shaman, medical, me um, medical medium, psychic, physical empath. I work very deeply with guys and your guides archangels for that sort of thing so you may get there at some point but check out my website thehealingbutterfly.org to see what else is there besides the meditations that are free the ebooks that are free and all the other information on my website that is free um subscribe to the website subscribe to this channel if you haven't already please um have a beautiful rest of May and happy Mother's Day. Every day of, of the year is Mother's Day as far as I'm concerned. Do what you can to connect with Gaia. And until next time, lovely soul, thank you for being here and watching. I will see you soon. Infinite love and blessings. Bye for now.